Thank you so much, all the dignitaries. Now, may I request all the dignitaries and scholars, please stand on your place to give honor a our incredible country with reciting of national anthem. विनायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता पंजाब सिंध गुजरात मराठा द्रविण कल बंगा विंध्य हिमाचल यमुना गंगा उछल चल दितरंग तब शुभ नामे जागे तब शुभ आशीष मांगे गाए तब जय गाथा जन गण मंगल गायक जय हे भारत वाक्य विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे जय 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 हे Now it's time to honor our distinguished chief guest, our guest of honors as well. I would like to start with honorable chief guest, Dr. Srinivas Rao Kevati, Kevati International Law Firm, New York, USA, London, and Wales, UK, and India. It is an extraordinary privilege to welcome, sir. Your remarkable achievements and contributions precede you, and we are deeply honored to have you grace this event. Your presence adds immeasurable value to our gathering, and we are profoundly grateful for your participation. To honor him, I would like to call here Honorable Registrar Sir of Neelam University, Dr. Rajiv Dayaji. Please come forward. I also like to invite Dr. Kevati, Dr. Srinivas Rao Kevati ji, please welcome, sir. It's just a token of just gesture and respect, sir, from the whole team of Neelam University in collaboration with ICRT team. Thank you so much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a distinct privilege and honor to extend a special invitation to Professor Dr. Shamim Ahmadji, Honorable Vice Chancellor, the fountainhead of the Neelam University and chief patron of this international conference to kindly step forward and accept this token of our heartfelt welcome to honor him, I would like to call here Dr. Simran Mehta ji. Please come, please come forward.
So we just request, sir, if you can stand here, that background will be. Sir, we have to do that. Let him borrow. Send him borrow. Yeah. Let's go. Thank you so much, sir. Now it's time to honor a special force behind the whole team, a man having meticulously leadership quality. Mr. Sandeep Chahal, Chairman Neelam University, Kathal. And to honor him, I would like to call Dr. Navneet Kaur here. Sri Sandeep Chahalji, Chairman Neelam University, put your hands together, a man with meticulously leadership quality, effortless skills. <laughs> Thank you. We are so much honored to have such a meticulous personality with dedication and commitment, with exceptional poise and tact, Mr. Victor Goffey here. And it will be glad for our Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir, to honor him here in this international conference. I would like to call Professor Dr. Shamim Ahmadji to honor Mr. Vikram Go Victor Gopi here. So please. I am the professor Arnatel or Dr. Thank you so much, sir, for your benign presence. Now it's time to honor Dr. Navneet Kaur, Executive Director, Education Division, ICERT. And I would like to call Dr. Preeti to offer a token of sincere and entreaty to our guest of honor, a woman of unwavering leadership. I request Dr. Preeti. Everybody, please put your hands together for our honorable dignitaries and guests. With a wealth of expertise in academia and a profound dedication to advancing knowledge, she leads the Institute's research initiatives with unparalleled vision and precision. With these words, I would like to call here Dr. Aruna Anchalji, Executive Director, ICERT, and to honor her, I would like to call Ms. Megha Sharma.
Thank you so much, ma'am, for your benign presence. Man with distinct vision and uncountable contribution in the education field, in research field. It's really an honor to announce the name Professor Dr. Rajinder Kumar Upalji as a guest of honor. Sir, please, I request to please come forward to receive a token of sincere gratitude and respect from the part of Neelam University Catholic in collaboration with ICRT. I invite Dr. Vikas Dip Singh Paniji to honor him. Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir, I also call you to please honor him along with Mr. Vikas Dip Singh Pauli. I would like to call Dr. Simran Mehta Accounts Division from ICRT and to honor her, I would like to call her Ms. Shivani Chahal from the Department of Computer Science. Now it's time to introduce, introduce who is organizing administrative tasks meticulously at ICRT, handling official correspondence promptly and efficiently, assisting with bureaucratic procedures effectively. Dr. Sandeep Kumar, Secretary ICRT, I invite Dr. Pavan Dasmana, Director, Research and Development, Milan University, to offer an emblem of mutual esteem and collaborative spirit to Dr. Sandeep Kumar. Thank you so much, everyone, to break this occasion with your benign presence. Now it's time to uh, moving towards the brief of the international conference. Neelam University Cathal, in collaboration with International Council for Education, Research and Training, is organizing one day international multidisciplinary conference on global dynamics in management, health, social sciences, sciences, and engineering. The conference will provide ideal opportunity to meet academics, practitioners, and experts in education research, leadership, social sciences, humanities, management, science, art, culture, and public policy to share their experiences and projects to receive quality feedback. Speakers and presenters share new concepts, best practices, knowledge experience, theories, and solutions with a focus on promoting learning, professional development, education, and inspiration among professionals and academics in their respective fields. The theme of the conference focuses on all areas of theoretical and empirical research in the following fields, that is global dynamics in management, health, social sciences, sciences, and engineering. This is 
a brief about this multidisciplinary conference. And with these words, I would like to call here our Dean Academics, Professor Dr. R.K. Guptaji for welcoming our distinguished and eminent guest. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Ekhtaji. A very warm, very good morning. It's my privilege to welcome you all in this uh, very reputed international conference. Honorable Chief Guest, Dr. Srinivas Raoji, Guest of Honors, Dr. Navneet Kaurji, Conference Chair, Dr. Simran Mehtaji, Dr. Sanjay Kumarji, Dr. Naga Maliji, and from Australia, Dr. Vikiji, our respected uh, uh, chairman, Sri Sandeep Chahilji, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Dr. Samid Hamadji, Secretary of ICERT, Dr. Sandeep Ji, other important office bearers of the management, Sandeep Chahilji, Director, Dr. Balraj Ji, our guest, Dr. K.K. Kataria Ji from Chandigarh, all important dignitaries on the dais, of the dais, delegates, respected family members. I express a warm welcome on behalf of the management, faculty members and the students, as well as our collaborator, ICERT, in the campus of Neelam University. I'm sure nowadays knowledge is power. Earlier the knowledge was doubling in 20 years, now it is doubling in two years. So this conference, international conference, will be a milestone in the field of science, health, etc. And after a lot of discussion, whatever will come out, it will be very helpful for the human beings as well as for the society. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir, for your valuable words. It's time to move towards our honorable guest of honor and keynote speaker, Professor Dr. Muhammad Amr Sadiq, adjunct HR and strategy management professor, a member of the Harvard Business Review Advisory Council, an opt-in research community of business professionals, winner of multiple international HR awards and one of the top 20 HR most international influential thinkers in 2014. Guys, put your hands together for such a great personality that we got to know here in this conference and in introducing him to be an honor for me. Areas of expertise, HR strategy, objectives, policy programs, micro and macro organizational training, domestic and international recruitment, organizational assessment for transformation, policy assessment, performance management, employee recognition programs, employee relations programs, a man with distinct vision, holds so many reputed designations with a glorious record of services, holding uncountable awards and recognitions. Recently in 2023, most iconic HR leadership award, Golden AIM Awards India goes to Professor Dr. Sadiq, time to welcome our eminent, illustrious, renowned keynote speaker with a bunch of gratitude words. Platform is all yours, sir. Professor Dr. Sadiq. Oh, thank you so much. And uh, good morning from Egypt. Uh, I'm very pleased to be with you today to provide or to deliver a small note on uh, changes in society values so if you can let me share the screen absolutely sir absolutely okay. all right thank you so much okay so i i, I think what we have we will talk in this uh, 15 20 minutes about values in crisis our values in society 
is changing very fast. Uh, I will talk about uh, in this part of the world, let, let me say Middle East, as, as we have the uh, spring the revolution. Since 2011, we have seen very negative movement on uh, societal values. Okay. And as we understand very well, that we have three types of, of, of values which come of individuals, society, and universal values. Whether it is individual or society or universal values, it's all developed and come up by family, educational institution, society itself, culture, religion, and the media. And I will need to stop on the media because uh, we are greatly believe that uh, current media giving a very negative impact on society, uh, particularly uh, TikTok uh, and other similar media devices, okay? Our characteristic of, of social change some of unavoidable, some universal, some multi-leveled. The change occurs both in at micro level and macro level, as well as it's contagious. So if if we are in a society with bad values, or with if we have a friends with bad values, that will definitely transmit it to us. Uh, all right, so <clears throat> factors that promote our social change and in, in our part of the world or, or currently worldwide, we see environmental resources, technology, artificial intelligence will change uh, our social activities, uh, isolation, people needs, as well as uh, culture base. <clears throat> so what happened exactly that affect our values? Social and culture inequalities. There are big variance between people in the income. Okay, globalization of the economy bring into play markets based on a wide range of desperate cultures. Increased in individualization. Okay, higher number of smaller household and increasing result in new social structure. <clears throat> Group identity and collective intelligence and gender. Those are changes in norms, values, and ethical issues. Global versus regional values, Europe, United States, versus our part of the world. I'm talking particularly Middle East, okay? I have no idea whether the, the global effect in India or not, because I haven't seen India for quite some time. Life changes, configuration of society has changed. Traditional family is not the norm anymore. There is an absence of families, absence of parents. <clears throat> Ethical management approach, uh, I greatly believe that is, is no more or no longer uh, loyalty in organization. It's all transitional. If I need the employee, I will keep him. If not, I will terminate him. All right. Social acceptance of new and emerging technology. New technology can raise ethical questions and resistance to acceptance. Okay. The, imp the impact of uh, coronavirus, Arab Spring Revolution, that resulted to the death of, of loyalty. Okay. As we see impact of social media, negative impact, I'm not going to talk about positive impact, I'm talking about negative impact, uh, hiding behind privacy, uh, provide more information that what is required, wastage of time. As so many people now they're going to, to use TikTok as source of income, okay? Impact of education, change in wider social environment, values loss in society in eyes of teacher, okay? 
change in knowledge and technology, in size and composition of population, <clears throat> also technology, as I said before. So what did we lost? What did we lost in our society? And, and we have seen that, we observe that, uh, and we feel sorry. Empathy, respect, and love. It's not available any longer. Loyalty, for definite. Honesty, yes. With honesty, you can admit your flaws and take the necessary steps to improve yourself. So that's what we have lost. So all the values are completely lost and not replaced by new good ones. I'm so sorry to say that we have seen a very bad values developing fast in our society. I think it's worldwide and can be contagious if you practice them. Many others will also. <clears throat> So my final note is what action do we have to have? Please. I'm sorry? Okay. The new world or the new chaotic world. Say okay. you may continue, please. Sorry? You may continue, please, sir. Ah, okay. All right, all right, all right. Okay, what action do we have to have? Uh, I think we need to promote change through conversation about values. We have to bring it back to schools, university, educational institution. I think families need to talk more about values, put values into action in our communities through ongoing education conferences, examine the economic models that underpin our society, big variance in, in levels and in income, excuse me, and make use of law and legislation to put values into practice. So today we are living in materialistic world where the standard of living has risen, but at the same time, standard of life is waning unbearably. I think we have nothing else to say, but we need to focus on values, uh, I'm very keen concern about uh, the negative impact that we're going to see, unfortunately, with the introduction of artificial intelligence. And uh, I would love to, to present on a, a later conference the impact of, of artificial intelligence on human resource management. Thank you for listening. I'm very pleased to be with you and have a good day. Thank you so much, sir, for such an outstanding and enlightening presentation, which you have shared on values. Because life is going so fast, we are in a race, and we have just living behind some our moral and ethical values as well. Uh, any dignitaries want to connect with Professor Dr. Sadiq? Okay, let's move ahead. With decisive and astute direction, skillfully direct <coughs> initiatives, the chairman ICERT, Dr. S.K. Sehma, passionately champions the organization's mission, inspiring excellence among team members. To welcome him with a sense of gratitude, I would like to call here Professor Dr. R.K. Guptaji, Dean Academics, Neelam University, Kethel. So please welcome Dr. S.K. Sehma Ji. Please come forward, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for your presence. Our, and another guest of honor, it is really honorable for me to brief about his profile. A prolific writer, a man of letters, a distinguished professor of 
Amrits, and acclaimed academicians, research stalwart, and the more ingenious guide has won accolades not only in the academic field, but also in the genre of research. Presently, he is serving in the most exalted institution, Baba Farid College of Management and Technology, Punjab, as a professor come principal, Dr. Rajender Kumar Upal, an accomplished academician, a distinguished author, a collaborative researcher, and an effective mentor to young scholars a visionary in the field of banking and finance, Dr. Upal completing the maximum number of major postdoctoral research projects on banking and finance. He has registered his name in the India Book of Records, Asia Book of Records, International Book of Records, and the World Book of Records. He authored, edited 72 books and amongst his prominent books, Indian Banking in the Globalized World 2013, Information Technology in Banks, A New Gateway for Success 2018, EH Banking, A Future Outlook 2018, Banking with Technology, A New Vision 2020, Managing Transformation in Indian Banks through E-Delivery Channels 2021 have won an array of laurels. His prodigious research talent gave him leverage to write as many as 255 research papers on banking and finance. And since 2017, some of his research papers on global recognition with Google Scholar Citation. He was even awarded honorary DELIT by reputed business university Costa Rica in 2014. International Peace University awarded honorary DELIT 2019 and Nelson Mandela University USA also awarded Doctor of Letters to Dr. Uppal. University of South America also awarded honorary DLIT International Journal. Nelson Mandela University awarded International, International Award, Dr. Abdul Kalam Best Economist Innovative Award for the year 2019. I think, sir, the list is not ending here. The outstanding educational and research achievements of Dr. Upal are simply too many to recount within the space of a short citation. Today, the acclaim he has attained academically, intellectually, socially, and spiritually is even beyond the dreams of majority of the achievers. With these words, I would like to call here Dr. Rajinder Kumar Upalji with a huge round of applause, all the scholars and dignitaries present over here. Honorable Chief Guest of Today's conference, Dr. Shirin Vasrao Vetri, New York, USA. Shri Sandeep Chahal, Chairman, Neelam University, Kathal. Dr. Bilraj Danda, Managing Director. Professor Shamin Ahmed, Vice Chancellor, Neelam University. A remarkably vibrant, humble, inspiring individual Dr. S.K. Sanmar, Chairman, ICERT, Guest of Honor, and Keynote Speaker, Professor M. Amar Sadiq, IPE Management School, Paris. Guest of Honor and Keynote Speaker, Noor Najra Naha Binti Omar, Senior Lecturer, Nalai University, Malaysia. Dr. Sandeep Kumar, the General Secretary of ICRT is a very modest, straightforward, honorable, visionary, and forward thinking individual, and his team, Dr. Shama Pervez and Dr. Simran Mehta, Dr. Namneet Kaur, 
Executive Director, Education Division, ICRT, Professor Dr. Arno Anchal, Executive Director, Research Publication Division, ICRT, Dean and Head Department of Education, Baba Masnath University, Rohtek, Professor R.K. Gupta, Dean Academics, Dr. Arjeev Daya, Registrar Neelam University, Dr. Pavan Dasmana, Director Research and Development of this university, Chairpersons of various technical sessions, Conference Coordinators, Dr. Vikas Kohli, Convener of this one day international conference, a very dynamic personality of this university and good researcher, Dr. Pardeep faculty members, students, researchers from India and other countries and other dignities sitting in this uh, conference. First of all, I congratulate to the Neelam University and ICRT selecting a very, very valuable topic, which uh, this topic is a need of the R when India has adopted one slogan that India will become a Viksat Bharat in 2047. Once again, I congratulate to Neelam University management, Vice Chancellor and faculty members, and ICRT team. As far as uh, as far as video play kar le presentation kar le presentation as far as uh, this uh, uh, theme is concerned global Uh, sciences and engineering, very comprehensive topic or theme, which includes so many things. Current scenario, current socio-economic scenario in 2023, Twenty three as per the Yes, current socio economic scenario in two zero twenty two three. As per the report of IMF International Monetary Fund, the real GDP growth will slow to 0.7% in 2023 and then further fall to 0.4% in 2024. According to the IMF report, India is now among the most unequal countries in the world. In India, the top 10% population earns 57% of the national income and 90% population holds only 60% 60 capital of India. There is a weak unequal uh, system in our country. The outlook is uncertain again aimed financial sector turmoil, high inflation, ongoing effects of Russia's attack of Ukraine, and three years of COVID. There is a demonetization of, again, Indian currency of note of rupee 2000 to check the black money to control the funding to the terrorist to check the duplicate currency. In many states of India, 
government of india is going to implement new education policy and there is a strong opposition of this uh, this uh, new education policy many states many universities are not ready to adopt this new education policy because this policy is good but unfortunately i am seeing here this policy is good but the infrastructure available in the institutions in the schools in the colleges is not appropriate we will very soon fail uh, to get the desired res result of this new education policy uh, ugc is going to establish first digital university in india indian population has crossed 142 crores and india has become first in the world after china there is a very fast brain drain from india to other countries in punjab what is happening many people many youth has left india they are interested either in canada they are in, interested in australia they are interested in new zealand there is a big brain drain then illiteracy is a big hindrance in the way of achieving sustainable development goals this is again very very important we are not in a position to achieve all the sustainable development goals the big obstacle in the way is illiteracy poor sanitation facilities in semi urban and urban areas health system is very poor especially in the rural sector climate change air pollution are adversely affecting the indian economy the period of winter is declining and adversely affect wheat and other crops gender inequality is there in many states only 15 percent women have smartphones recently i have conducted one survey in bihar and west bengal regarding the use of smartphone unfortunately i am saying this gap big gap ladies are not allowed to use smartphone in bihar and in west bengal only 15 percent women are using this smartphone india's rural poverty has shoot up in analysis of nso data suggest that while urban poverty has been falling but rural poverty has increased imf says overall investment growth is projected to uh, decelerate markedly from 4 percent in 2022 to 0.9 percent in 23. unemployment is continuously in the rising trend in our country not in our country in almost all the countries unemployment is continuously increasing you see what happened on 13th uh, december of this year some four persons attacked on indian parliament the message was there is one lady neelam azar she said why we have attacked on indian parliament the answer was first the reasons may be some other reason may be there but the main reason we are well qualified i have cleared net i have uh, uh, seat at so many like I, I i am fully eligible for the job and my age is 37 years seven years and i am not getting the uh, uh, employment and th and that is why we have attacked the parliament this is a message given by the youth <clears throat> poor infrastructure is big obstacle in the way of economic development india is the fast growing economy 
economy. Furthermore, India's per capita income has doubled in the last decade and poverty rates have declined significantly, but the gap between the rich and the poor is continuously increasing. In 2023, global recession may adversely affect Indian economy, which is not a good sign for election 2024 for the ruling party. India's economic growth is projected to decelerate 6% in 2023 from 6.6% in 2022, according to the United Nations. As per the IMF reports, Indian economy will grow at the rate of 7% in 2024. Uh, if I will talk to the global dynamics, global transformation, this transformation is taking almost in all the segments. Either it is a financial sector, banking sector, insurance sector, education sector, this transformation is taking almost in all the sectors. The policies of the developed countries, their global dynamics, their policies of the developed countries are penetrating in the underdeveloping countries. Our country is also affected by the many policies of United States. Recent transformation in social sciences, management sciences, science and engineering. Digitalization has created recent transformation in many segments of the world economy. There is a complete change. The social sciences, management sciences, science and engineering field is completely changed. There are new models of growth. There are new models of marketing. There are new, new models of education. This recent transformation has also changed educational process, either to deliver the education or evaluate the various transcript. Now it has become to achieve 17 sustain, sustainable development goals. Uh, then Chandrayaan 3, with the transformation in science and technology, India has become the first country in the world to reach to the moon, that is CH3. This is the biggest achievement of our country. Uh, Aditya L1, mission to study the sun in details. Again, it is a successful mission of the government. Then this uh, uh, SG technology, India has 5G technology. India has successfully able to implement 5G technology. Either it is a urban sector or it is a rural sector. And 6G technology at present, India, India is working on this technology, how our youth is interested in uh, 6G technology. <clears throat> AI, artificial intelligence is playing crucial role in the field of emerging technology, banking and research. Removal of 370 Act in Jammu and Kashmir is a historic day recently Supreme Court of India also supported the decision of Modi government that this is the appropriate, appropriate decision of the Modi government that we should remove the uh, Article 370 from in Jammu and Kashmir. Then uh, Women Reservation Bill, again, very important bill which has been introduced by the 
Modi government. Unfortunately, I am saying one thing. There are so many policies has been adopted by the Modi government to protect the uh, ladies. But unfortunately, I am saying recently one thing happened. One lady is a judge in one district of uh, UP. She wrote a letter to the chief uh, judge of Supreme Court, Supreme Court of India, Chandar Chur, that Ma'am Marna Chati Hum. Kindly allow me. Hindustan ke Supreme Court ke Chief Justice ko ek lady ek judge letter likhta hai ke Ma'am Marna Chati Hum mujhe allow karo. Unse permission mangi hai. Wo letter aise jaise main pad raha hu G News pe aise sabhi ke samne pada gaya. उस लेडी ने क्या रीजन बताया है क्यों मरना चाहती है इसलिए मरना चाहती है कि वर्क प्लेस पे जो सेक्सुअल हरासमेंट है मेरे साथ बहुत ज्यादा हुई है और मैं अब इससे ज्यादा और जीना नहीं चाहती मुझे मरने की इजाजत दी जाए दिस इज द सिचुएशन टू सी then global economic issues in 23 there are so many global issues are there and they are obstacle in the to achieve the sustainable development goals uh, global issues global unemployment the federal country's latest forecast is for the jobless rate to edge high from 3.8 percent in 2023 to 4.1 percent in 2024 that is a con continuation of the current trend global recession india's finance ministry has said a recession may appear in 2024 this is not the problem of only 22 or 23. This will also happen in 2024. Due to fears related to higher food, energy prices, and geopolitical tensions, India's trade deficit reached a record high in October due to higher value of imports and lower value of exports. Slow, do, uh, slow down in global economy. Global economy to slow down, but likely avoid recession in 2024. But remember it, the adverse effect of global recession of 2023 will affect the in 24 also, but uh, some, some to, to some extent less. Mild recession expected in 2024. The global economy is forecast to grow 2.9% this year, with next year's growth seen showing uh, uh, showing to 2.6%. Most economists expect the global economy to avoid a recession but have flagged possibilities of mild recession in Europe and the United Kingdoms. Then global dynamics of brain drain. There is a fast brain drain from India to other developed countries due to lack of jobs in India. In our country, there is a big problem of uh, unemployment, particularly I will say in Punjab, Many youth has left the family. They are interested in either Canada or uh, New Zealand or Australia or so many other countries. Uh, according to government, uh, government data, over 1.6 million 
people have left their Indian citizenship since 2011, leading to loss of billions in tax revenue for India. This phenomenon is being referred to as the great Indian brain drain. In India, brain drain has become a significant concern due to the sound departure of talented individuals seeking better opportunities abroad. Uh, I will say one thing. What is happening in Canada recently, the talented youth of Canada is also left in the Canada. You see the trend, what is happening in Canada, the talented youth is ready to leave the Canada. They are interested in the United States. पहले ऐसा था कि हम वरिड बहुत थे कि हमारे बच्चे कनेडा जा रहे हैं अब कनेडियन गवर्नमेंट को भी ये प्रॉब्लम आने लगी है कि कनेडियन यूथ इज आल्सो गोइंग टू यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स देन ग्लोबल ग्लोबलाइजेशन ऑफ हायर एजुकेशन एजुकेशनल ग्लोबलाइजेशन मींस वाइडर एंड ब्रॉडर एजुकेशनल अपॉर्चुनिटीज फॉर सिटीजंस Higher education has attended a key position in the knowledge society under globalized economy. Globalization has intensified competition in the higher education sector on the large scale. Indian institutions now face the challenge of positioning themselves. I will say uh, in the coming days, University, UGC, University Grants Mission Chairman, Dr. Jagdish Kumar has allowed and prepared the guidelines and to allow the some foreign universities, they can open their campus in Indian universities. Very soon they are going to start their campus in Indian universities in Punjab, in Rajpura, in Chitkara University, one cap campus, they are going to start uh, of the uh, foreign university. If the foreign universities will work in India, what will be the future of our institutions? It is a question mark for all the universities. It is a question mark for all the institutions, either to improve, otherwise you will face the very serious competition. Small universities, small institutions will not, not, are not able to face the competition. Very soon, very soon, uh, uh, I will not say this thing, but they will face the very severe competition from the foreign universities. Then, the decline of human values and relationships in today's world. The decline in human values and relationships is a growing concern in today's rapidly changing world. In family, what is happening nowadays? Family, which is the first school of person's life, used to be source of happiness and support for people in the past. However, today's children are raised with limited knowledge about family and family relations. This is the adverse effect of this recent technology. Being a father, I wish to give one message to this uh, conference to the all the parents sitting here kindly. It is in my humble submission. Check the phone of your children daily, regularly, what they are doing. Sometimes, if you will not check, it may be harmful. The, this technology is adversely affecting the this social relations, social values. Our values are continue, continually in the declining trend. Mo 
modern technology and the pursuit of material sciences have contributed to the deterioration with the increasing influence of social media and digital, digital communication people are becoming more isolated and less uh, empathetic towards others additionally the focus on material wealth often leads to compromise their values and integrity uh, due to uh, time constraints I am not uh, explain each and everything, but I wish the success of this uh, international one day conference. And I once again congratulate to the organizer. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Rupal. You have put light on a lot of sensitive issues on global level. Now, time to connect with an inclusive academician, embodiment of mission and vision of critical thinking, professionalism, excellence, and innovation administrator and a program coordinator, excels at multitasking and leisuring with various departments, measuring doctorate in human resource management, Nor Nazeruna Omar Din. From University Tun Abdul Razak, Uni Razak Kuala Lampu. He excels as a program coordinator and senior lecturer to support the update of course syllabi and perform duties in accordance with applicable standards, policies, and regulatory guidelines. Module leader, part-timer online mode at Brittany University. Online module leader, role of module facilitation to the students as per schedule, designing of module guide with teaching framework, schedules and module assessment plan for face-to-face -face and online facilitation, undergraduate and postgraduate project supervisor from the same Brittany University, principal Olympia College Kuala Lumpur, assistant director of studies, Nirvana Education Group Kuala Lumpur as well. So. Put your hands together for such a great personality we have among us as a keynote speaker. Let's connect with us, sir. Platform is all yours, sir. Sorry, ma'am. I apologize from the depth of my heart. Uh, ma'am, Nord Nazirana, Omar Dev. All right. Okay, Assalamualaikum, Namaste, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Right, I hope you can uh, see my particular uh, uh, screen. Yeah. Oh, yes. All right. Take short time. Your screen is visible. You may proceed. All right. Okay. So, uh, first of all, thank you to ISET for inviting me. Uh, for this international monthly disciplinary conference in the topic of global dynamic in management, health, social sciences, sciences and engineering. Uh, today, my topic will be mostly on integrating global dynamics through SDG, Sustainable Development Goals 3 and 4 in higher education institutions, a global perspective. I'm Ms. Nona Zrana Haji Omardin, Program Coordinator and Senior Lecturer currently in Ila University, based in Malaysia. Let's see what's interesting in the integrating global dynamics through SDG 3 and 4 in higher education institution as in global perspective. Higher education institutions, or foremost we known as HAYES, have a vital role to play in advancing the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, which aim to end poverty, protect the planet, and ensure peace and prosperity 
for All by 2030 United Nations 2015. Sustainable Development Goal, what is it? There is at least 17 SDGs introduced. Two are directly related to health and education. SDG 3 is known as good health and well-being, where the aim is to ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all age. And SDG 4 focus on the quality of education. It ensures inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. These two goals are interdependent and mutually reinforcing as education is a key determinant of health outcomes and health is a prerequisite for effective learning. This is quoted by Chan Klesny and Matt Cowan in 2020. Moving forward, as I have shown just now, SDG 3 is focusing on health and well-being goals. And SDG 4 is related to higher education. To explore further on SDGs in higher education, it is actually divided into two segments, which is external and internal. In the external segment, SDGs of quality in education are focusing on into education, which is teaching, learning, and training. It also focuses on research, which is under theoretical and applied. And it also outreach to the community engagement, cross sectors, partnerships, and also advocacy. In the internal side or internal segments, it focuses more on facilities such as buildings, land use, transportation, and waste management. It also touches on the corporate finance, which is tuitions, endowments, procurement policies, and grants. Last but not least, it also touches on the governance, where internal policies, long-term planning, and reporting are included in the SDGs of quality in education. So let's see and explore further how higher education institutions can contribute to achieving sustainable development goals of three and four, which are related to the higher education industries. The Hays can contribute to achieve the SDGs by providing quality education and training for current and future health professionals. They also can conduct relevant and impactful research and innovation on health and education issues. Moreover, there also can be an engaging in partnership and collaborations with other stakeholders such as governments, civil society, and the private sector. Other than that, there are many examples of higher education institutions that have successfully integrated global dynamics into their programs in relation to SDG 3 and SDG 4. From many of the examples, I've chosen the related ones, which I would like to present today. The University of Edinburgh in the United Kingdom has established the Global Health Academy, which aims to improve global health and make life better through collaborative, interdisciplinary research, education and research development. The University of Cape Town, in South Africa has launched the African Climate and Development Initiative, which brings together researchers, practitioners, and students to co-produce knowledge and solutions for the complex challenges of climate change and sustainable development in Africa. This is very much interesting. Other than that, based from my home country, the University of Malaya, in Malaysia has created the Center for Civilizations Dialogue, which promotes intercultural and interreligious dialogue and understanding among diverse communities and civilizations. The last but not least, the University of Sao Paulo in Brazil has developed the Institute of Advanced Studies, which fosters interdisciplinary research and innovation on topics such as democracy, 
human rights, environment, health, and education. From many of these examples, this shows that higher education institutions has already taken a vital role to integrate global dynamics into their programs in relation to the Sustainable Development uh, Goals 3 and 4. Integrating global dynamics into HAIGS, curricula, pedagogy, and governance means that the higher education institutions are aware of and responsive to the complex and interconnected challenges and opportunities that affect the world, such as the Sustainable Development Goals. This can have several benefits and challenges, as well as implications for his social responsibilities and accountability. Let's explore the benefits of integrating global dynamics into higher education institutions. First and foremost, one of the benefits would be providing quality education and training for current and future professionals who can contribute to solving global problems and creating positive change. They also can conduct relevant and impactful research and innovations on issues that matter for the well-being of people and the planet. Moving forward, engagement in partnership and collaborations with other stakeholders, such as government, civil society, and the private sector, by sharing knowledge, resources, and expertise, as well as to advocate for the importance of education and health for sustainable development. This is also to enhance their reputation and attractiveness as institutions that are committed to social and environmental values and goals. The last but not least, it's to foster a culture of diversity, inclusion, and global citizenship among their staff and students, as well as their wider communities. This can be the benefits of the integrating global dynamics into higher education institutions. All that comes with benefits have to face challenges. So there are challenges of integrating global dynamics into higher education institutions. I have found five most challenges that arises in integrating global dynamics into higher education institutions. The first one is aligning. Aligning their vision, mission, and strategy with the SDGs and other global frameworks and ensuring coherence and consistency across their activities and operations can be a tough challenge for the education system. Adapting their curricula and pedagogy to incorporate global perspectives, competencies and skills, and to address the needs and expectations of their learners and employers. This can be vice versa, the educators, the academicians, and also the students need to adapt on the changes to integrate global dynamics in the higher education institutions. Balancing. Balancing their local and global roles and responsibilities and managing the potential tensions and trade-offs between them. The higher education institutions needs to balance the sustainable development goals, the curricula, and also the uh, particular roles and responsibilities towards their localization and also globalization. Measuring and reporting. Measuring and reporting can be impact and contribute to the SDGs and other global indicators and demonstrating their accountability and transparency to their stakeholders. It will be tough for the academicians, the educations, and also the higher education institutions to measure and report on how far they have achieved the sustainable development goals uh, and focuses on their roles and responsibilities. Last but not least is on securing securing the adequate resources and to support and implement and sustain their global initiatives and programs and to cope with the uncertainties and risks of the global context. These five points can be a tough challenges of integrating global dynamics into higher education institutions. 
I would like to also focus on the particular significant implications for his higher education institutions, social responsibilities and accountability. By integrating global dynamics, we at the particular higher education institutions as educators and academicians can actually contribute to a significant implications for the social responsibility and accountability. And how this can be done. The first one, by expanding the scope and scale of influence and impact on recognizing the interdependence and interconnectedness with other actors and systems. We also can embrace the ethical and moral duty to contribute to the common good and to respect the rights and dignity of all people and the environment. Being academicians and educators, we can adopt a holistic and integrated approach to address the social, economic, and environmental dimensions of sustainability and try to balance the needs of the present and the future generations. We also can enhance the dialogue and communication with the stakeholders and involve them in the decision-making and evaluation process. Last but not least, by developing and applying appropriate frameworks and standards to assess and disclose the performances and progress toward the SDGs and other global goals and to identify and address the gaps and challenges. By doing so, we would be able to integrate the global dynamics and significant implications of sustainable development goals three and four into the higher education institutions. That's all from me. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. It's such an informative session to put light on the challenges of integrating global dynamics into higher education institutions. Thank you so much, ma'am. Now, I would like to call here Professor Dr. Shamim Ahmadji, Vice Chancellor, Neelam University, Kethel, to address the conference, all the research scholars, dignitaries, and our eminent guests. So please, dice is all yours. Good morning, everybody. Honorable dignitaries on the dais and of the dais. Today is the gala day. It's truly a great opportunity for me. And also it's a great opportunity in the history of the Media University that we have assembled here to hold a very intellectual discussion on the multidisciplinary approach to research. In fact, we have gathered here just to listen to iconic figures just who have been invited from India and abroad. But the theme of the international conference of paramount importance is never gone at all. It is all concerned with the pace of time, it is all concerned with the changes happening in the whole world. That is a multidisciplinary approach. What is the need for putting the decision on multidisciplinary approach? That is very big reason. Though the world is changing the breakneck speed, sports changing. And those who will definitely respond to the call of time to change will survive. And those who will outpace the pace of change will hold the position of the leader. Now, but now, this is for you to decide whether you want to survive only or hold the position of a leader. This is what you decide. And the North India, definitely we are progressing fast. But we have yet to gain the leadership position. There is the team of one of the Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, who want to see India in two in 2000, for so this developed nation. It is not, it is a very, very difficult task. But if we pay heed 
the resources available in our country, it is very easier to talk also. We are having the plethora of resources that is lying dormant or rather untapped. But we have to become smart enough to tap those scarce resources. If we happen to tap those resources optimal, then the dream of achieving the status of the nation is not too far away. It is very easy. We are having the youth. Global, at global level, 20% of global youth belong to India. We have to actually respond to our time to achieve ourselves. We have to update ourselves to changes happening in and out. We have to be updated with the global changes and make ourselves competent enough to respond to the global changes. So this is all concerned with the management of change. And this is possible only through multidisciplinary research. Multidisciplinary research is not an awesome terminology. Rather, it focuses on the various perspectives that can be had by virtue of research on multidiscipline. Now the era of the specialization is gone. We have to diversify. You must gain multiple knowledge. Only then you can definitely respond to all of time. Multidisciplinary providing you multi perspective on your part that will enable you to take optimal decision, optimum decision. This is all concerned with the optimality of the decision at all. To what extent you are optimal your decision. So this international conference is focused on the optimality of the decision through the research approach to multidisciplinary. I think I am able to come to my thoughts to you. We have gathered the reason, the I point fears. In nutshell, I have to say that we have to change or will perish. <coughs> this is the only slogan from my end. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir, for your valuable words. Now the moment of excitement has come as we have commencement of book release. So I request all the dignitaries, please come forward to release the book. Encyclopedia of Indian Banking Industry by Professor Dr. Rajendra Kumar Upalji. I request all the scholars to put your hands together for such an innovative and very informative work. We have one more from the Dr. Upal, and of course, undoubtedly, it will be so much enlightened to read on Indian banking industry. Congratulations, sir. Thank you.
We have another moment of release also. Secondary agriculture in India from Dr. Pradeep Kumar. Please, sir. Now the time to release. Now the time to release our conference proceeding book. Our conference proceeding book on the theme of global dynamics in management, health, social sciences, sciences, and engineering. Thank you so much, all the dignitaries and our distinguished guests. <laughs> Now the time to listen from our eminent, illustrious, renowned personality, Mr. Victor Goffey from Australia. So please welcome on the dais to share your precious words with the conference. Namaskar, one and all. I am uh, deeply honoured to have been invited ex tempore to speak before the illustrious gathering here. So many people that I, I just cannot begin to thank. So many illustrious uh, scholars and eminent people. So thank you so much. I'm from Australia. I have uh, been coming and going from this country for nearly 30 years. I speak a little Hindi, not much. Uh, my background is particularly in education and capacity building. Now, the theme of this conference is about the relevance of open learning around the world, isn't it? Multidisciplinary approach to education. And I've applied that in my personal life covering so many different fields, so many different topics. But the one thing that I must praise India for is that it has a vast knowledge bank. And in with respect to some comments made by our illustrious Dr. Upal, I'd like to make a couple of small rebuttals or corrections to some points that were raised there. There has been a, a, an attitude that some of the young people that have gone to other countries to learn can be regarded as brain drain. I would like to rebut that by saying, having spent 30 years in this country, serving this country in an educational capacity, I came here voluntarily. Does that mean that this country, does that mean that this country is conducting brain drain of me? No. It means that I'm willingly and voluntarily sharing capacity building, building and knowledge to others. Similarly, many of the students that are motivated to go abroad and settle abroad, their heart is still with India. And at a certain time, after they've achieved their personal goals, earned money, capacity building their families, raising their children, they come home. Many of them come home. They bring their wealth and their knowledge with them. So India benefits from the sharing of the knowledge. And that's what education is all about. It's about sharing the knowledge. 
And we seniors in the education pr profession, it is our duty to share this knowledge. As I say to the students in my lectures, we educationists do not perform our function for the income. We perform our function for the outcome. So in other words, the greatest benefit and the greatest satisfaction we educationists can yield is sharing our knowledge with others, capacity building others, and seeing the young ones grow and prosper, isn't it? So on that note, I'd like to say thank you so much for giving me some time on the understand. This is a, an a unscheduled event, uh, for me that is. And so I've, I've come simply as a guest and I feel so honoured to stand before you. So thank you and namaskar. Thank you so much, Mr. Vikram. Now, I would like to call here Dr. Sayyid Azam Moinuddin from Johannesburg, South Africa, to grace the dice. So please welcome. Good afternoon to everybody. I am Sayyid Azam Moinuddin, working as a CEO in an international infrastructure company. This is Indian group, operational in you know, West and South Asia and Africa. First of all, let me say thanks to event organizer for giving opportunity to share dice you all and everyone. By profession, I am environmentalist, chartered engineer, civil and urban planner. I am also member of many professional bodies, full member of institution of Environmental Science UK and life member of International Epidemiological Association USA. Member Emirates Planning Association Association, Indian Ar United Arab Emirates, affiliated members, Society of Engineers, United Arab Emirates, Dubai. Life member, Indian Road Congress, India. Life member, Indian Building Congress. Life member, Indian Science Congress. I have completed more than 400 projects, infrastructure projects in my 30 years. And I provided over 10,000 Indians as employ employment. It is also generated foreign reserve to India. I am also roaming around different nations and handling different currencies and obediently follow their national laws. At the end, I would like to share a few words regarding this message for students. Research education knowledge, <laughs> research is creating new knowledge our knowledge, thoughts, perception, and action are influenced <laughs> by our world view, which is collection of attitude, value, tales, and acceptations about the world. Training is the action of informing, instructing your employees on the certain task in order to help them improve their performance or knowledge. Education is the formal process where knowledge is, knowledge is informal experience. Education acquired through formal institution like school, colleges, and universities. 
whereas knowledge is gained from real life experience. Education increased the propensity of better employment opportunities. Not only education makes smarter, but boost economic growth and increase the GDP of the country. It's allow the people live healthy and quality life style with high standard of living. Lastly, I suggested job seekers not to be disappointed while you are searching or struggling for good job. Nowadays, education is very common and competition is very high in the market. You have to make yourself a different personality by gauging knowledge and education. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Sayan. We feel honored to have your presence in this conference. Now it's time to call Dr. Navneet Kaur to extend word of thanks to honorable guest for this inaugural ceremony. I would like to call Dr. Navneet Kaur, educator, leader, a lady with having exceptional communication skills with Huge round of applause. So everybody, please give her a warm welcome. Namaste everyone. Greetings to all. It's beautifully said, the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. And I really want to congratulate every person who's sitting here, who belongs to Cathal, who belongs to anywhere in the India or global. We are one. That oneness comes when both these universities have come together. Leenam University and ICERT. Today, I feel incredibly honored and privileged to have been allowed to extend the vote of thanks on this inaugural session. This is momentous day in ICRT and Neelam University's history as we have hosted this grand educational multi-conference today. We are still in the process. I would like to propose a vote of thanks to our delegates across all these streams from research to science and technology. You have just seen them on the screen. Professor Dr. M. Amar Sadik, Adjunct HR and Strategy Management Professor, IPE Management School, Paris. Huge round of applause for the person. Conference Chair, sir. Professor Dr. Rajinder K. Upal, PhD, DLIT, Professor Emeritus, MTC Global Chair, Professor Banking and Finance, BFCMT, my God, Batinda Panchal. What a legend personality we have. We have with us Nor Nozera now, Binti Omardin Program Coordinator, Senior Lecturer, Nilai University, Nilai, Malaysia. She really spoke from heart the integration of SDG 3 and SDG 4. Big round of applause for her. The chief guest of the day, Mr. Srinivas Rao from USA. What a pers versatile personality you are, sir. Wonderful to meet you. Uh, chairman of both the universities, Neelam University and ICRT University. We have with us Professor Dr. Shamim Ahmed, sir, Vice Chancellor, Neelam University. I feel that he is the captain of today's ship. Big round of applause for Sir. And Mr. Vic Lawrence Gaffney, an institution in himself. He just came here in front of you and just in, I think, five minutes, he can totally compiled his whole journey. That is what education is teaching us, modification of behavior. We may be globally associated. We may be from Australia, India, or anywhere. But if we can touch the human heart, and I believe when he was standing here, he has touched every soul. Big round of applause for him also. I sincerely thank all the guest of honors and speakers for taking time from their busy schedule and gracing the day with their warm presence. It's indeed a great honor to be in this gracious presence of such an eminent speakers and participants known for their great contributions to their respective research field. 
Heartfelt gratitude to the post bearers of ICRT and Neelam University who contributed and continued in the technologies to organize today's event. The administration received enormous cooperation in arranging the venue, ensuring the availability of every resource. I'm extremely honored to everyone for being a part of this Thanksgiving session. The struggle ends when gratitude begins. So gratitude for every breath, Gratitude for this journey, gratitude for every learning, gratitude to every soul who is present over here. Namaste Jai Hin. Thank you so much. We will forget these moments, we will forget each other. But these photographs, these videos will make history. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your enthusiastic words. With these words, and with a word of thanks from Dr. Namit Kaur, we will move ahead towards our plenary sessions. And our first technical session coordinator will be Dr. Dilpreet Kaur. Second technical session coordinator will be Dr. Rohitash. Third technical session coordinator will be Ms. Shivani Chahal. Fourth technical session coordinator will be Ms. Megha Sharma. And for the technical session first, we have Chairperson Professor Lakshmi Narayan Das, HOD, MBA, GUC Campus, Bhubaneswar. For the technical, for the second technical session, as a chairperson, we have Dr. Priyanka Singla, Associate Professor, Department of English, Government College for Women, Kisar Haryana. For the third technical session, we have Chairperson Dr. Pushpanshi Singh, Associate Professor, Department of Humanities and Applied Sciences, School of Management Sciences, Lucknow. For the fourth technical session, we have Dr. G. Radhika as a chairperson, Professor, Valor College of Science and Management, Karur Tamil Nadu. So let's go ahead with our technical sessions. We have first technical session here in the main room. Now I would like to invite Dr. Dilprit Ko. A very good afternoon, everyone. So today's theme, Global Dynamics in Management, Health, Social Sciences, and Engineering represents a comprehensive exploration of contemporary trends and challenges in this multifaceted domains on a global scale. This broad-reaching theme suggests a focus on interconnectedness and interdependencies that shape the evolving landscapes. Today, we are embracing the synergy synergy of global dynamics in management, health, social sciences, sciences and engineering. For it is within this intersection that innovates, that flourishes, that excels, that explores, that re-imbibes, that weaves the tapestry of progress. A very good afternoon, candidates and delegates. Today, we are going to have parallel sessions and I request all the participants to kindly join the links of their respective sessions. You can see a more option in the Zoom room, option in the mobile phone or Zoom toolbar in the windows at the left top corner in your Android. Please look for the option and join your respective rooms. I again repeat, you can find the more option in your Zoom toolbar in the windows or left top in the Android. You can join your respective technical session. One, two, three. One session will be in the main room. You can join technical session two, three, four accordingly as per your respective schedule. Please join your respective rooms so that we can proceed with our technical sessions. Our first technical session chairperson is Professor Lakshmi Narayan Das, HOD, MBA, GEC Campus, Bhubaneswar. Let me introduce our chairperson, sir. Lakshmi Narayan Das, sir, is an accomplished professional with extensive experience in the realms of academia and corporate ventures. Currently serving as an assistant professor in marketing at Stunstone Education Private Limited. Gandhi Engineering College campus, he brings wealth of knowledge, specializing in marketing management and various facets of business administration. 
sir lakshmi narayan das sir has a robust teaching background having held key roles such as principal at golap institute of management and technology bhubneshwar and contributing significantly to the academic and administrative landscape his corporate journey includes roles as an assistant branch manager at sahara india and development officer at icfi hyderabad noteworthy is his dedication to research with publications in national and international journals a patented journal authorship of a book on emerging trends in management and many more recognized with this prestigious awards including chanakya award sir lakshmi narayan das is a seasoned professional contributing significantly to both education and industry he has attended around 70 national and international seminars workshops and symposiums at national and international level he has been a reviewer of top journals and conducts training programs for practitioners also sir stands as a dynamic figure in academic and corporate sphere embodying a holistic approach to learning and development we are honored to welcome the chairperson of technical session 1 lakshmi narayan das sir welcome sir thank you very much ma'am uh, good morning ma'am thank you very much for a warm introduction ma'am thank you sir i would again request all the participants to please join their respective rooms by clicking on more option in the left top in android or zoom toolbar in window and please join your respective rooms sir should we start the session excuse me ma'am myself yes. nagamalli is this particular room is a technical session one room yes you know? yes ma'am Yes, yeah. ma'am. This is technical and session one. And the first participant. According yes, to you are the first participant, ma'am. You are Nagamali Arswali. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, ma'am. You are the first participant. Please be is ready with your presentation. My screen is uh, shared, ma'am. Oh no, ma'am. Uh. We can't see your screen yet. Please share your PPT screen. Good afternoon to all. Uh, I am Dr. Rohitas Kumar, Department oh, of Physics. Oh, disabled, ma'am. नीलम यूनिवर्सिटी के तक हेलो हेलो सर यस मैम आर यू रेडी विद योर पीपीटी यस मैम I am ready, but the host is unable to share the screen. It is showing. Okay, uh, sir, should we start the technical session one with your permission, chairperson, sir? Uh, yes, yes, ma'am. Please start. If again the first speaker is already ready with her PPT, ask her to present. Yes, sir. Sure. So now I welcome Dr. Nagamali Arsavali. from lakshmat university she will present on the topic a comprehensive review report on impact of artificial intelligence on litigation we welcome you ma'am thank you ma'am please start your presentation ma'am every participant will get 5 minutes for the presentation please try to compile your presentations in those 5 minutes yes ma'am very good um, am i visible ma'am my yes, first yes, slide ma yeah ma'am your ppt is not visible please share your screen if it is possible or you can continue yeah that's what i'm asking uh, here is my screen host disabled participant screen sharing host disabled i would request icrt to please allow the screen sharing by participants 
I would request our technical team to please allow the screen sharing by our participants. Ma'am, you can start. It will be done. Please start. Yeah. If the screen Meanwhile, is not sharing. I request Ms. Noe Gung Penny Owang from Nagaland University to be ready. She is second in the turn. Please be ready, ma'am. Miss Noeng Penny Owang. Yes, ma'am, please start. Host is disabled participant screen sharing series. Uh, uh, hello. Yeah, Dr. Nagamalli, this side Lakshmi Narayandas, the chairperson of the technical session. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm yeah. here. I'm ready Hi. with my part. PPT. Okay. If uh, if PPT is visible, please start. If PPT is not visible, please go for extemper. Okay. Okay, sir. Myself, Dr. Nagamalli Arsavalli, working uh, in the KL University Koner Lakshmaya Educational Foundation from Vijayawada, Andhra Pradesh. I myself uh, is a researcher and my, today I'm going to present uh, my uh, presentation on a comprehensive review on impact of uh, artificial intelligence on litigation. As this particular conference is an international multidisciplinary conference, today we have uh, taken two different fields. One is artificial intelligence and another part is uh, litigation. How AI will help the uh, lawyers, judges, and how the technology will help uh, to facilitate uh, uh, the uh, persons who are having uh, legal issues. Today, uh, first of all, before going deep into the discussion, uh, I'm saying my hearty congratulations uh, to Dr. Rao Kaveti, uh, who has given me a platform here to present this particular session. And I, I, uh, I'll also uh, myself uh, I'll extend my gratitude to uh, Neelam University who has provided a multidisciplinary conference who has given a platform through the team ICERT. ICERT, uh, as the name itself, they have uh, taken education, research, and technical trainings all over globally. They are conducting the sessions. So today, I got the chance to uh, mingle with uh, the team ICERT and Neelam University. So welcoming uh, into the platform, these are the contents today, uh, Professor uh, uh, Lakshmi Narayana Dasji, a very warm welcome to this particular conference. Hi, sir. And in this uh, five minutes uh, session, I'm going to give a brief review of a brief review on Till the, uh, yeah, yes, yes, yes. So now my screen is shared, sir. Yes, sir, I think so, it is visible. And many professors are also there, like Noor, Nazrian, ma'am, and uh, Jayvanti, all the participants, a warm welcome. So, Today, the objectives, keywords, introduction, impact of artificial intelligence, features, challenges, what is, what is the role of AI in the field of litigation that we are going to discuss through this ICERT platform. Now, being the technical person, I want to give you a brief review on what is artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence, AI, which is ruling the industry 4.0 era, all the industrial transforming applications where industries are including the medical field, health technologies, digital marketing, management, defense, and all the surveillance areas. And also it is ruling the field like service sectors, such as education, and uh, it is also substituting uh, in future with uh, the globally, it can change the legal sector also. 
the entire scenario it is going to uh, make a tremendous change with ai now not only the uh, educational sector but also the legal sector we can make a global change the paper in this particular uh, paper i want to summarize few current research and practical concerns that uh, that will be enabled and produced in the future by the technology involvement and also it assesses the benefits challenges and probable future developments of ai in the field of litigation what are the objectives the impact of ai on litigation is reshaping the landscape of litigation by improving the efficiency and accuracy uh, so how uh, dr dr nagamal just just i am because it's a, it's a very precise conference and again lot of speakers are there so please confine your entire discussion to three point what again the entire yes, sir, sure if sure, it is, sir if it is a conceptual paper then you sure. tell it's a, so just present your findings and uh, your outcome definitely sir. if it definitely is a, sir the impact of uh, predictive analysis and what these are the keywords litigation law and here the confined uh, let me give you the litigation law predictive analytics analytics and artificial intelligence or how the data driven algorithms will help uh, in the field of uh, this litigation sector the legal profession long rooted in the tradition reliant process on precedent is undergoing an essential move driven by the swift advancement of ai here a influences the extends far beyond mere automation and it has altered the key essence of litigation from legal research and case management to decision making process the legal practitioners have invested a great deal of time and money in manual processes in uh, the documentation review case analysis and legal research so now here a is reinventing all the essential principles thanks to the machine learning algorithms natural language processing like nlp and predictive analytic algorithms these uh, three will rule the world of ai and with with the basic algorithmic structure we can make the things easy the purpose of this article is to investigate the complex uh, impact of ai on litigation and to investigate the benefits and address the obstacles uh, which are caused in the field of litigation and delve into the ethical and regulatory implications that accompany along with the ai tools now coming to the predictive analysis and predictive what are the few aspects of ai ai in the legal research the first part will sorry play a vital ma'am sorry to interrupt you ma'am but please compile yeah confining case review and all these things now pai predictive analytics it is a subset of artificial intelligence emerged as a transformative tool in the field of litigation now the second part goes to uh, historical data analysis much more large amount of data has to be taken from the uh, case uh, perspective and case law court decisions relevant legal precedents all these then can be included with respect to the ai technology early case management and challenges here what are the challenges there is biasing of the data interoperability accountability ethical dilemmas and regulatory framework all these uh, challenges we have to be mitigated through the ai technology and uh, by using the algorithms here data security and data privacy biasing in training the data training uh, more number of uh, inputs to the artificial algorithms uh, such that the quality and control is possible so here by based on confining to the last but not the least with the technology here improved decision making is possible by uh, by taking the similarity index with respect to by comparing to the algorithms various cases can be easily handled and first in first out to last in uh, first out here the decision making is uh, uh, will be a future and uh, finally benefited to the clients here client communication is easy and time tracking uh, and legal research because few cases will be over the years uh, without giving the solution so time ma'am 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 please conclude please conclude ma'am
Yeah. So this is uh, the conclusion. The integration of AI in the field of legal legal profession has brought about the significant improvements in the decision making processes for legal professionals, including the lawyers, judges, and all the legal scholars too. See here. Let me conclude. This particular section explores how AI enhances the decision making with the legal area and how the enhancement. Uh, Overall, various parameters like data processing, data security, and case management, how the particular AI tool helps. Okay, so let me conclude uh, with this particular session. Thank you, Mrs. Uh, Noorjahan, ma'am, and uh, the professors of uh, all. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. It was a very insightful presentation. Now I would like to quickly invite the next participant, Mrs. Ms. Noi Penny Award. Thank you, sir. Please stop sharing your screen, ma'am. Please stop sharing your screen. Now I would like to require next participant, Ms. Noi Penny Award. Am I audible? Am I audible? Hello, am I audible? Yes, yes, ma'am, you're audible. I would request Dr. Dhwani to be ready. She is the next participant. And I also request all the participants, okay. please wind up your presentations in four to five minutes. It will be a very grateful gesture. Thank you. You can start, ma'am. Okay, okay. I'll, uh, I'll be showing my screen. Mm -hmm. Please start, oh, ma'am. Okay, just give start. me a second. Uh, I'm unable to share my PPT. It's okay, ma'am, no issues. You can start like this. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, uh, to the chairperson and to the coordinator. Uh, myself, uh, Nguyen Bini Ovang from Nagaland University, Koima. And today I'll be presenting on the cultural lifestyles of the travel people of Nagaland. So we all know that culture, it is a way of life. It includes everything. It includes the food, the clothes you wear, or the religion that you practice. And everything includes, it includes the art, music, literature, the sculpture, architectures, philosophies, all these are the aspects of the culture. And culture differs from place to place and from country to country. And it all depends on the historical process uh, that, a, uh, that a place or the region has undergone. So with the growth and development of science and technology, uh, it has become the yes. young generation, they are very much aware of the rich cultural heritage because uh, they are so much drawn into this modern technology that they are now becoming unaware. So it is very much important for uh, it play, the education play a very important role in preserving and promoting the rich cultural heritage of the uh, of our own community or of our country. So uh, my objective is about uh, the cultural heritage uh, that is specifically uh, dedicated to the Lotha culture tribes. So in Nagaland, there are 17 tribes and each tribe have their own unique culture, their food, traditions, costumes, everyone have their own unique culture. And in order to preserve and promote this rich culture, even the government of Nagaland taken up various steps and the, the one what is the hornbill festival which is the very much popular and and it is also known as the festivals of the fe festival and during this the government of Nagaland has organized this festival in order to promote the rich cultural heritage of the Nagaland and it is conducted uh, it is held from the month of December that is from first from 1 to 10 December every year uh, in the Koima district. And during these festivals, various 
culture, culture, traditions, costumes, foods, traditions of every tribe is being displaced during this uh, festival. And this festival is named after a very popular bird, which is called the cornbill bird. As for the people of the Snaga, this cornbill bird is very special and it is a very sacred bird. So this is named after the Hornbill Festival is named after this bird. And uh, even in order to promote the rich culture of the Nagas, the government of Nagaland has even joined partnership with the ambassadors of the foreign ambassadors, such as the US, the Colombia, oh, and Please conclude. Please come to the conclusion. Oh, okay. So, uh, what I would like to say is that uh, the culture is very important and even the NEP has also highlighted the importance of cultures. So uh, along with the growth and technology, uh, the education should play a very important role in promoting the rich cultural heritage, such as by including uh, the curriculum, uh, including uh, celebra, uh, the culture in the curriculum uh, from the uh, from the primary from the primary stage, so that the children will know about the rich culture heritage uh, of their culture and of the community that they uh, that they they are in. So that is about my that that's okay. Thank you so much for the time. That's it. Thank you so much, ma'am. It was a very nice presentation. Now I would quickly invite our next participant of the day, Dr. Dhwani Bankim Chandra Desai from Government's Arts, Commerce and Science College, Kutchas. She will present on human resource accounting and its benefits in the Indian public sector. Are you there, ma'am? Dr. Dhwani, ma'am? Dr. Dhwani, are you there? Rest of the participants, please mute your mics and stop sharing your screens. Dr. Dhwani, ma'am. Dr. Dhwani, Bankim Chandra Desai, are you there, ma'am? Rest of the participants, please mute your mic. I will move to the next participant, Dr. Rinko. Participants, please mute your mic. It is my humble request. Please mute your mics. I would invite Dr. Rinko from Jyotiba Pule Government College, Radu Jamuna Nagar. Sir, are you there? NBC, sir, please mute your mic. NBC, sir, please mute your mic. Excuse me, ma'am. Yes. My name is Ayodhya. Dr. Sunita Gutak, I lost my connection in between. My number was there at the third position. Yes, sisters of Christ. Okay, okay. Dr. Ringo, are you there? Okay, I would invite our next participant, Ms. Kurvinder Kaur and Dr. Ashutosh Singh. Yes, ma'am. From Hamiti University, Rajasthan. Yes, ma'am, you can present. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Kurvinder Kaur. Research Scholar, MIT University, Rajasthan, Jaipur. And my presentation topic is Role of Banda Singh Bahadur in Sikh History. The Sikhs emerged as a political force in Punjab under the leadership of Banda Singh Bahadur. During the 18th century, the growing power of Sikhism challenged the Mughal Empire, and Banda Singh Bahadur, the Sikh military commander, established the first Sikh state in northern India. He struck out coins in the name of the Sikh gurus, issued official seals and assumed royal authority. He declared Logar the first Sikh capital, made some administrative arrangements and removed the Mughal Jamidari system for the first time in India's history. The aim of the study is to analyze the process of the establishment of the first Sikh state and the role of Banda Singh Bahadur in Sikh history. As we, as we all know, the location of Punjab in the northwest frontier of the Indian subcontinent is a matter of great geographical and historical significance. During the ancient period, 
the Mauryan Kushans and the Gupta emperors gave special attention to this frontier and effectively managed it. During the Sultanate period, considering the political importance of Punjab as a bulwark of defense for India, Lodi Sultans made administrative arrangements to secure the northwest frontier as the Mongol inventions became a big challenge. During the Mughal period, the most significant religious movement that had emerged from Punjab was Sikhism, and Sikhism emerged as a main social religious movement in Punjab, which it was founded by Guru Nanak Dev and gave a different identity by Guru Arjun Dev and Guru Hargobind. After Guru Gobind, Guru Har Rai, Guru Har Krishan, and Guru Teg Bahadur brought about a change in Sikhism to the people to fight against injustice. Guru Gobind Singh, the 10th Sikh Guru, son of Guru Teg Bahadur, established the Khalsa Panth and established a spirit of self-confidence and brotherhood and converted ordinary people into courageous soldiers. When he was uh, in Nandir, which is presently in Maharashtra, he met Madhudas, a Bhairavi Sadhu, and initiated him into Sikhism. And after the death of Guru Gobind Singh, Banda Singh Bahadur, commander of the Sikh force, adopted an aggressive policy against the Mughal political anarchy, social injustice, and economic discrimination of the Mughals. He sent some Hukamnamis of Guru Gobind Singh to the Sikhs of Punjab and motivated them to join him against the Mughals. And many people joined his movement, again, uh, uh, joined this movement against the Mughal Empire. Banda gave an open challenge to the Mughal by attacking Sonipat and occupied Samana, Kathal, Mustafabad, Kapuri, Sadhora, Sarhe, and, and Saharanpur. He declared, uh, he established his uh, headquarters in Logar and declared it the capital of the first six state. Banda Singh Bahadur assumed the royal authority and struck out coins in the name of the Sikh Gurus and issued official seats and hukumnames. However, Banda Singh Bahadur's rule in Punjab and around Delhi division did not last long, but Banda was the first man in Punjab to realize that the only escape from the Mughal letters was to destroy the Mughal power itself. Banda replaced the Mughal uh, Muslim government officials with the Sikhs and made a start towards creating the Sikh states. Banda Bahadur occupies a vital place in the history of medieval India. He was not only a great daughter of Khalsa or great discipline of Guru Gobind Singh, but also a great freedom fighter who fought for the peoples against the despotic rule, rule of Mughal officials. No doubt. Sorry Guru to interrupt you, ma'am, but please conclude. Uh, therefore, there is no doubt that Banda Singh Bahadur played uh, a crucial role in Sikh history. The Sikh MSJ as a powerful political force against the Mughal Empire under the leadership of Banda Singh Bahadur. He was the first among Sikhs who established the first Sikh state and the Sikh community under his banner challenged the mighty Mughal Empire and contributed to its decline. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Now I would like to invite our next participant of the day. Dr. Godwin Adeji Navogu from Federal University, Oyo Ekiti. He will present on adult education as an enabler of 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Are you there, sir? Dr. Godwin, sir? Dr. Godwin, sir, are you there in the podium? Dr. Godwin Adeji Navogu, sir, are you there? I would like to give my second call to Dr. Dhwani and Dr. Rinku. Are you there? Okay, I'll move to our next participant, Mr. Sonu Kumar. Mr. Sonu Kumar from Mahatma Gandhi Central University. Mr. Sonu Kumar, are you there? Yeah. Yes. Good afternoon, ma'am. Mr. Sonu Mr. Kumar will present on the outcomes of three-piece rigid scleral fixated intraoral lens implantation in patients with deficit posterior capsule following complications in manual small incision cataract surgery. We welcome you, sir. Please start your presentation. Doctor, please, Dr. Godwin Ayodeji is, is, is available. Yes, yes, Dr. Godwin, sir. You can present after Sonu, sir. Please be ready. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mr. Sonu Kumar, sir, please proceed. Yes, sir. Your screen is visible. You can start. 
A very good afternoon to all of you and welcome to my presentation. First of all, let me thank you all the audience who have joined us here today. Myself Sonu Kumar, a research scholar from Geology Department, working under the supervision of Professor Arthur Ranapal, Mahatma Gandhi Center University, Bihar. The topic of my today's presentation is the outcomes of three piece rigid stratigraphic system intra lens implantation in subject with deficient posterior capsules following complications in manual small incision cataract study. Now we will come to the introduction part. First of all, we will understand what is cataract. Cataract is known, uh, normally a eye disorders which is in which the eye becomes cloudy in nature. The most common system related to the blood vision that the patient faces and the common uh, risk factors belongs to the age, diabetes, smoking, as well as exposure to sunlight. Nowadays, the only option that is most uh, prevalent among the patient to treat such a type of cataract disease is only surgical option, that is cataract surgery. Next slide. Now we will discuss how the common disease of blood that is cataract is basically caused by the age. In this cases, the eye lens become and uh, becomes uh, get degraded due to the protein uh, due to the protein factors and due to the background of proteins. Finally, it leads to the damage of cell membrane fibers, which leads to cataract disease. Next thing. Okay, now we will discuss uh, the prevalence, uh, prevalence of this cataract disease, that is uh, cataract. About 12 million people suffer from the uh, cataract uh, disorders uh, according to the global prevalence rate. And in India, it is about 80% due to the cataract. Generally, the females uh, get most get affected in this cataract disease, and uh, it may be in the form of emulators or bilaterals. And uh, in the main causes belongs maybe the, due to the trauma cases is hypermetropia as well as The objective. Next slide. Is, oh. the, the objective of my uh, today's uh, research work that is to update the surgical visual outcomes and complications of scleral fixated intraocular lens implantations following complications in a small incision cataract restriction. Now, uh, in this, in this uh, study, we have taken all uh, total number of patients, that is 174 patients belonging to the cataract disease. And this, um, this uh, operations was done in a vision care center Regina, that is situated in the Gopneshwar. It was a retrospective four year uh, cohort study, and the, these are the ethical approvals that we have taken from the Orisha Kar Eye Hospital. In this uh, process, the, these are the list of uh, inclusion and exclusive criteria that you can see in the screen that uh, the patients at least follow up six months were taken. And also, we, uh, we have measured the uh, condition that is pre operative BCBA and post operative BCBA. BCBA stands for breast erected uh, visual acuity, that is measured among the patients to uh, retain uh, the visual power among the patients. Next slide, please. Sorry to interrupt you, sir, but please come on the conclusion. Okay, uh, finally, we have uh, performed a surgical method which basically includes two process that is PPB combined with accelerated fixation of intraocular lens implantation. Finally, when this, uh, these two techniques are applied among the patient, uh, they are the, uh, then, then we see that the visual equity becomes improved among the patient, which we can see in the further slides. Uh, please move to the next slide. Read us directly. Further, next. Here, uh, yes, okay, next slide. Next, yeah, okay, this slide. Here you can see that before surgery, uh, it was uh, mentioned as a preoperative uh, value of uh, mean value was 0 0.3 or better, that was among only three patients, that is 1.7 percentage. But after the follow up time, means after the surgery, the visual equity becomes improved to 0 0.7, that is the mean value. 
and it uh, uh, generally occurs among one ten patients. That was sixty three point two percent. The, here we, uh, where you can also see that the worst condition that was before the surgery that was once uh, among the 132 patients, but after the surgery it becomes uh, 1.2 percent. Here we uh, uh, see that the role of this combined technique uh, um, uh, basically performs uh, a basal improvement on the patients, basically in the cataract. Now move to the conclusion section directly. Yeah, next. Okay. In this uh, observation, we have found that there are several uh, surgical complications we are uh, uh, included, but there, uh, there was one case of macular root. That was new in my research study, and it was seen that the cases of macular root is one of the uh, most uh, new complications that was uh, seen during the surgical times. And uh, by the help of this combined technique, we can resolve various complications uh, without attempting a uh, second surgery. It means that uh, by combining this uh, uh, technique, uh, these both uh, prove safe and effective. It also offers positive results without increasing the risk factors uh, among uh, major, uh, uh, also the different complications. And this uh, surgical technique was most benefited for the cataract patient. Next slide. Now, I would like to thank my supervisor and uh, the vision care centers of my Dr. Jean Amishwara for, for, for performing such a surgical uh, uh, process among the cancer patients. Next slide, please. And these are my research paper that was published uh, in uh, a severe um, impact factor 4.1. Uh, and that you thank you, thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Now, I would like to invite Dr. Godwin Adeji Navogu for his presentation. Please present, sir. Yes, yes thank you, ma'am. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. You can start. Okay. okay good. good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, great scholars. Uh, my name is Dr. Godwin Adeji Navogu from the Department of Adult Education, Federal University in Nigeria. I want to present a paper titled Adult Education as an Enabler of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable development. Ladies and gentlemen, in the wake of an increasingly interconnected and dynamic global landscape, the pursuit of sustainable development has emerged as a paramount societal imperative. The United Nations member states adoption of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development in 2015 provides a comprehensive framework for addressing the complex and interconnected problems that humanity is currently facing from reducing poverty and uh, combating climate change to promoting gender equality and providing high quality education. One of the key pillars of this agenda is the commitment to lifelong learning and education, recognizing the vital role of education in sustainable development goals achievement. However, the 2030 Agenda's goal is advanced via adult education, which is an essential part of the educational continuum. The rationale for this research lies in the urgency of achieving the 17 SDGs by 2030 as well as the recognition that adult education can act as a catalyst for sustainable development. Various studies have highlighted the informative potential of adult education in improving livelihoods, promoting health, enhancing gender equity, and fostering social inclusion, all of which align with the aspirations of the 2030 Agenda. Yet, despite its potential, there remains a gap in our understanding of how adult education can be strategically leveraged to advance the SDGs. By critically analyzing the function of adult education in sustainable development within the context of the 2030 agenda, this research seeks to close this gap. Therefore, in the bid to the realization of the SDGs, adult education will improve literacy and education, enhance gender equality, promote economic empowerment, foster lifelong learning, promote environmental sustainability, and reduce poverty and economic growth. This paper presents case studies that illustrate the positive impact of adult education on poverty reduction. Case study one is on adult literacy programs in India by Sain and uh, Jabara Jakati in 2017. And case study two is on skills training for women in sub-Saharan Africa by Hovart and uh, Inberg in 2014. These case studies demonstrate that positive impact of adult education and literacy programs on poverty reduction in different contexts. 
They draw attention to how adult education may give people the information and abilities they need to end the cycle of poverty and enhance their general quality of life. The paper also presents case studies that illustrate the positive impact of adult education on quality education. Case study one Sorry is- Sorry to interrupt you, sir. Sorry to interrupt yeah. you, but please come to the conclusion. All right, okay. So um, based on this, um, to enhance uh, adult education and contribute to the achievement of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, there is need to integrate adult education into national strategies, provide equitable access to adult education programs, establish quality standards and accreditation for adult education programs, promote digital literacy, create awareness campaigns to emphasize the benefits of adult education, encourage businesses and employers to support adult education through workplace training and upskilling programs encourage community engagement to meet their local needs, then promote international cooperation, uh, promote incentives for participation in adult education programs, and also invest in research and innovation in adult education. Conclusively, uh, it is important to know that adult education plays a critical role in advancing the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development by empowering individuals with knowledge and skills, promoting inclusive and equitable access to education and training, and raising awareness about key global challenges. It contributes to the holistic development of individuals and communities, ultimately leading to a more sustainable, equitable, and prosperous world. Thank you, and God bless you for listening. Thank you so much, sir. Now I would like to invite Dr. Kapendra Singh from CRM College, Hisar, Haryana. Are you there, sir? Dr. Kapendra Singh? Dr. Kapendra Singh, are you there? I would like to invite Dr. Kapendra Singh. Are you there, sir? Okay, I would move to our next participant then. Dr. Renu Bala from Nelam University, Kethal. Are you there, ma'am? Dr. Renu, ma'am? Dr. Renu Bala, ma'am, are you there? Okay, I would move to our next participant, Mr. Rahul Kumar, Baba Sahib Bhima Rao Ambedkar Bihar University. Mr. Rahul Kumar, are you there, sir? Mr. Rahul, sir? Yes, you can start your presentation, sir. Good morning, all of you. Myself, Rahul Kumar from BRMU, Bihar University, Mujapurku. My topic is Life Cycle of Ugwaba Fruit Fly, Bactro, Sera, Rosalis, and next. We know that guava fruit is very beneficial for our health. Our doctors may be suggested guava fruit like jaundice, hepatitis, liver cirrhosis, fatty liver, etc. Guava is very healthy. Fruits con containing sufficient amount of bacteria, calcium, phosphorus, and vitamin C. This fruit is in infested by a number of insect pests. Spectrocera dorsalis handle, formerly known as Dicus dorsalis handle, no, no. and no, no. No, no. the oriental fruit is major pest in the country. It was carried out to establish the other participants to please mute the mic. Other participants, please mute the mic. There is a lot of disturbance. Please mute your mics. Yes, sir, you can continue. Bactrocera dorsalis in Mujapakur. We are during rainy season and winter season of 2022 to 2023. Next. Observation. Bactrocera dorsalis was observed that the life cycle duration of the oriental fruit fly on guava average 25.3 days and 28.3 days respectively during rainy and winter season. The longevity of the um, fly was observed 31.4 days and 33 Point five days during rainy and winter season in case of male adult male, 6 point six days and 49 point, 49, 49 point 49.4 days during rainy and winter season in case of female adults. Next. Life cycle of guava fruit fly. Guava piscinum guasvas is found 
fourth most widely grown fruits crops in India. The area under Goa is about 0 0.50 million hectares, producing 1.18 million tons of fruits. Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Madhya Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh, and Maharashtra are the leading states known for producing the highest qualities of these fruits is a large cultivable lands area. Bactrocera was estimates that 95% of the oriental fruit fly developed on Guava. Next. Life cycle. The, the projected investigation was carried out to study the life cycle duration and longevity of Bactrocera dorsalis on Guava fruits in different season different seasons, rainy season and winter season during 2022 to 2023 in uh, at Mujapur, Bihar. Next. Winter season, 35% damage and rainy season, 45% damage guava fruits. Next. Mat material lands. Material and matters. We all know that guava is very beneficial for our health. Ke liye अगर अगर किसी को फैटी लीवर हो जाता है या लीवर सोरेसिस की प्रॉब्लम होती है या जॉन्डिस होती है या हेपेटाइटिस बी होती है तो डॉक्टर्स सजेस्ट सजेशन करते हैं कि गुआवा खाने के लिए सजेशन करते हैं अभी लाइफ अभी लाइफ टाइम का जो सिड्यूल चल रहा है सिड्यूल चल रहा है लोग काफी सॉरी लोग काफी मात्रा में वाइल्ड फूड का ज्यादा प्रयोग कर रहे हैं जिसके वजह से तरह तरह का लीवर से रिलेटेड डिजीज उत्पन्न हो रहा है इसलिए जो हमारे लिए बेनिफिशियल है हमारे लाइफ के लिए बेनिफिशियल है बेहतर जीवन के लिए बेनिफिशियल है ठीक और ये गुआवा अगर हम प्रतिदिन अगर गुआवा का प्रयोग करते हैं गुआवा खाते हैं तो हमारा लीवर से रिलेटेड और लीवर सोरेसिस एंड लीवर कैंसर से रिलेटेड कैंसर वगैरह ये डिजीज नहीं उत्पन्न होगी रिजल्ट ड्यूरिंग लास्ट 6 मंथ नवंबर 2022 टू 2000 अप्रैल 2023 ए स्टडीज ऑन द कंट्रोल ऑफ बैक्टोसेरा डोरसेलिस वाज कैरीड आउट इन मुजफ्फरपुर मुजफ्फरपुर के अंदर बैक्टोसेरा डोरसेलिस एक कीट है जो गुआवा फ्रूट में लगता है और काफी मात्रा में डैमेज करता है ठीक है डिजीज इन गुआवा गुआवा में लगने वाले कुछ डिजीज है जो गैंगर्स डिजीज है नेक्स्ट Management 1% body looks mixture of lime sulfur, one, uh, 1 in 25, 3 or 4 spraying and pro, uh, protects fruit for 5 days. Next, acknowledgement. Acknowledgement. Authors are thankful. The head of the university department of geology, BRFU, Bihar University, Mujapurpur, for providing laboratory facilities. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Now I would like to invite Mrs. Aditi Vohra from Kurukshetra University. Are you there, ma'am? Mrs. Aditi Vohra from Kurukshetra University. She will present on the topic assessment of nutritional status and awareness regarding perimenopausal symptoms among perimenopausal women. Also, I would like to mention here that next presenters, Dr. Satish Kumar and Sushil Kumar, sir, please be ready with your PPTs. Yes, ma'am, you can start. Please, ma'am, start your presentation. Um, thank you, uh, Niram University and ICRT for giving me this uh, opportunity. I am Aditi Vora, research scholar from Prashitra University. Today, my topic of presentation is assessment of nutritional status and awareness regarding peri perimenopausal symptoms among perimenopausal women. Next. Uh, first, we should know what is perimenopausal stage. Perimenopausal is a natural transition. Um, from reproductive to non-reproductive. Basically, perimenopausal stage kya hoti hai ki jab, uh, whenever a female uh, having skip periods, jab unki periods skip hote hai, irregular periods hote hai, us stage ko hum perimenopausal uh, stage bolte hai. Uh, ye jo uh, stage hai, ye bohat months to years vary karti hai. Kisi ladies mein menopause jo hai, jaldi aa jata hai, aur kisi mein bohat saalo baar aata hai. Jaysay, it varies from uh, months to years. Next. 
during this stage uh, the hormones like testosterone and estrogen level is come uh, is very deficient due to this uh, uh, various symptoms like uh, psychosomatic vasomotor sexual psychological symptoms uh, these all are uh, symptoms are very high in the body next so there is very need uh, it is very important and it's a very important health concern in India owing to improve economic conditions, rapid lifestyle changes, and increased longevity. So the uh, present study was conducted to the aim to study the prevalence of the perimenopausal symptoms. Next. Okay. For this, uh, I'm using purposive sampling technique. 180 perimenopausal women uh, in the age group of 36 to 50 years from different areas of Ambala, Haryana, I have selected. Next. Pre-designed and uh, pre-tested questionnaire, I have to choose from this uh, um, uh, to collect information regarding various perimenopausal symptoms categorized under psychological, uh, psychosomatic, vasomotor, sexual, urogenitals, and other symptoms. Next, first of all, we should know that uh, uh, what is vasomotor system, hot flashes, night sweat, sweating, these all are symptoms come under vasomotor. Psychosocial, in psychosocial, poor memory, anxiety, depression, irritability. Uh, these all are symptoms are come in psychosocial uh, symptoms. Next. Physical, uh, physical symptoms in physical uh, symptoms, fear, tiredness, decreased strength and stamina, itches in body and muscles, flatulence. In sexual uh, symptoms, changes in sexual desire, avoid intimacy. These all are symptoms are come. Next. In psychosomatic, disruption in sleep and mood swings are there and in urogenital, vaginal dryness and avoids intimacy. Next. Okay, uh, the data should are uh, data collected was organized, compiled, analyzed in terms of mean and percentage. Next. Okay, in this, uh, uh, for nutritional status, I have to take an anthropometric measurements. Okay, and uh, for this... Sorry to interrupt you, ma'am, but please come on the conclusion. Next. Next. Okay. Uh, in BMI, body mass index, these underweight, normal, overweight, pre obese, grade one, uh, obesity, grade two, these all are come. Uh, in underweight category, only 2% are women are come in underweight category. And uh, in only 15% women having normal weight. And 43% uh, uh, women are overweight. 17% women are pre obese. 12% uh, women are come in grade 1, 7% in grade 2, and 3% in grade 3 uh, obesity. Only 8% uh, women are waist shape ratio, normal waist shape ratio. Otherwise, the rest all women are come in obese category. Next. 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 Okay. In this table, uh, these are all the symptoms. 95% of women having physical symptoms of feeling tired. And 89% of women having uh, uh, decreased strength and stamina. 67% women has a uh, uh, feeling of flatulence. And in psychosomatic disruptions, in 86% women have complaint of disruptions in sleep. And 77% women of complaint of mood swings. In vasomotor symptoms, 91% of women having sweating symptoms. And uh, uh, in psychosocial depression, 95% of women uh, having depression. And in sexual uh, changes in sexual desires, 57% women of having this problem. And neurogenital, 52% uh, women of having bladder problem. Next. 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 Okay, and in conclusion, uh, the prevalence rate of perimenopausal symptoms among perimenopausal women are very high. So there is need to uh, educate and among awareness regarding these women. Because they don't know what our stage is, our stage is, and we need to tackle their symptoms. Like they don't take their nutrition properly, their tea intake is so low, their water intake is so low, they don't take their diet, they don't take their fiber in their diet, they don't take their diet, they don't take their diet, ना फ्रूट्स लेते हैं ना साइड सैलेड लेते हैं इसके अलावा ना ही उनको कोई फिजिकल एक्टिविटी करते हैं लाइक उनको रनिंग वगैरह के लिए अगर कहो कि आप रनिंग करो वॉक करो कुछ भी फिजिकल एक्टिविटी करो कुछ भी रिक्रिएशनल एक्टिविटीज करो बट दे आर सो मच बिजी इन देयर हाउस होल्ड वर्क कि उनके पास टाइम ही नहीं है ये सब कुछ करने का एंड दे न्यूट्रिशन पार्ट को वो अपना इतना निगलेक्ट करती हैं कि अगर उनसे पूछो कि आप सुबह ब्रेकफास्ट कितने बजे करते हैं तो शेर दे सेट कि हम बारह बजे हमारा ब्रेकफास्ट होता है 
ये सिर्फ एक वुमेन की बात नहीं है मैं एक दो की बात नहीं कर रही हूँ जितने भी मेरे सब्जेक्ट्स मैंने लिए हैं मैक्सिमम मैं उनकी बात कर रही हूँ और जो मैंने वैसे भी जो मैं काउंसलिंग करती रहती हूँ लेडीज की उनसे जब भी मैं पूछती हूँ कि आपका दिन का सारा स्केड्यूल क्या रहता है तो मतलब वो अपना न्यूट्रिशन पार्ट को इतना निगलेक्ट करती हैं अपनी फैमिली को पूरा न्यूट्रिशन देंगे अपने हस्बैंड को पूरा देंगे बच्चों को पूरा देंगे बट अपने आप को न्यूट्रिशन देने के लिए उनके पास टाइम ही नहीं है सो so, ये बहुत कमी है लेडीज का मतलब आ, अपनी हेल्थ को लेके कि वो अपने हेल्थ के लिए बिल्कुल भी अवेयर नहीं है सो देर इज नीड मतलब ये टाइम है अपने आप को अवेयर करने का और आप दूसरों को भी एजुकेट कीजिए कि अच्छा न्यूट्रिशन ले और अपनी जो डाइट है फाइबर इज डाइट ले ताकि जो आपकी हेल्थ है ओवरऑल हेल्थ आपकी अच्छी रहे थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच मैम इट वॉज अ वेरी इंसाइटफुल प्रेजेंटेशन नाउ आई वुड लाइक टू इन्वाइट डॉक्टर सतीश कुमार फ्रॉम एफ जी एम गवर्नमेंट कॉलेज आदमपुर हिसार डॉक्टर सतीश कुमार सर आर यू देव डॉक्टर सतीश कुमार सर फ्रॉम एफ जी एम गवर्नमेंट कॉलेज आदमपुर हिसार आर यू देव सर ओके आई वुड मूव टू आर नेक्स्ट पार्टिसिपेंट देन सुशील कुमार चौधरी सर फ्रॉम देवीलाल यूनिवर्सिटी सिरसा सुशील कुमार सर आर यू देव सुशील कुमार चौधरी फ्रॉम देवीलाल यूनिवर्सिटी सिरसा आर यू देव सर यस सर यू कैन स्टार्ट योर प्रेजेंटेशन गुड आफ्टरनून गुड आफ्टरनून एवरी वन स्पेशली डॉक्टर जो हमारे सो जो फर्स्ट टेक्निकल सेशन चल रहा है उसके चेयरपर्सन प्रोफेसर लक्ष्मण नारायण दास जी कोऑर्डिनेटर डॉक्टर दिलप्रीत कौर जी आई एम ए पी एच डी स्कॉलर फ्रॉम सी डी एल सिरसा डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एजुकेशन टाइटल ऑफ माई पी एच डी थी इज ए स्टडी ऑफ अकेडमिक रेजिलियंस study of academic resilience of senior secondary students in relation to their achievement motivation family environment and learning outcomes aur is conference ke liye maine ek alag se paper taiyar kiya hai wo uska naam wo kis topic pe hai wo hai relationship between uh, academic resilience and achievement motivation of senior secondary students in haryana state ye jaise ki topic lene ke piche ye hai ki aajkal jo आजकल हमने देखने में आया है कि जो सीनियर सेकेंडरी स्टूडेंट्स होते हैं ये एक इस फेज में होते हैं एडोलसेंट्स के अंदर कि वो बहुत तरह की प्रॉब्लम का सामना कर, कर, करते हैं जिस तरह की भी स्लाइड जैसे कि इसमें है ये जैसे कि भी रेजिलेंस है ना ये अकेडमिक रेजिलेंस के बारे में रेजिलेंस क्या होता है कि भी एक एबिलिटी होती है बीट द ओट एंड बाउंस बैक डिस्पाइट फेलियर इस किसी तरीके का भी फेलियर हो सकता है भी तो उसको हमें क्या करना है उसे उबरना है उबरने के लिए ये हमने इसके स्टडी की थी और इसमें क्या देखते हैं हम आगे जैसे कि भी मोटिवेशन है मोटिवेशन किसके बारे में बताता है मोटिवेशन होता है बच्चे को क्या करता है गोल के प्रति उसको मोटिवेट करता है लेकिन जहां पर जो रेजिलेंस होता है रेजिलेंस क्या करता है उसको नेविगेट करता है सेटबैक्स एंड कंटिन्यू देयर अकेडमिक जर्नी एकेडमिक जर्नी को करने के लिए इसका एक एक बेसिक रोल होता है दोनों चीजों का ये हमने स्टडी की है सतारह नवंबर दो हजार बीस को मेरा इनरोलमेंट हुआ था इसके अंदर तो अभी ये लास्ट फेज में चल रहा है इसके अंदर पेपर निकाल रहे हैं हम इसके अंदर कॉन्फ्रेंस के लिए तो इसके हमने स्टडी की इसके अंदर हमने जो ऑब्जेक्टिव ली है जो स्टडी के लिए वो स्टडी के लिए लिए कि एक तो इनका जेंडर के भी आप देखना जो हमारे डेमोग्राफिक वेरिएबल है उसके अंदर हमने लोकेलिटी का और जेंडर का लिया था लेकिन हम यहाँ पे किसका ले रहे हैं हम इसका ले रहे हैं जेंडर बेस पे कर रहे हैं इसके अंदर जेंडर बेस के ऊपर कि भी देर विल बी नो सिग्निफिकेंट डिफरेंस बिटवीन बिटवीन ये सिग्निफिकेंट डिफरेंस ऑफ एकेडमिक रेजिलेंस ऑफ सीनियर सेकेंडरी स्टूडेंट्स इसके बारे में है और ये उसका अचीवमेंट uh, मोटिवेशन का और उसके बाद क्या है एक रिलेशनशिप की इसकी एक हाइपोथिस हमने टेस्टिंग की है और रिजल्ट के द्वारा हमने जो भी कंक्लूजन निकाला है कंक्लूजन क्या निकला है कि दोनों में कोई डिफरेंस नहीं है अचीवमेंट मोटिवेशन के अंदर भी और एकेडमिक रेजिलियंस के अंदर भी कोई वो नहीं है और जो आजकल जो नई एजुकेशन जो पॉलिसी आई है एनईपीआई है 2020 उसके साथ हमने कोरिलेट करने की कोशिश की है इसको 
कि भी एकेडमिक रेजिलियंस है इसको हम किस तरह से कोलेट कर सकते हैं क्योंकि ये जो एन ई पी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी है ये हमारा जो रूट लर्निंग के बजाय प्रैक्टिकल लर्निंग पर एम्पेसिस करती है एनहांस करती है कैसे भी बच्चों की हम उसको कैसे एनहांस कर सकते हैं तो इसके लिए हमें यही बात के का रिसर्च का मैं कंक्लूजन था कि भी दोनों में कोई डिफरेंस नहीं है निकला इसके अंदर और रिलेशनशिप निकला इसके अंदर और इसको हम कैसे एनहांस कर सकते हैं बच्चों के अंदर भी जो एकेडमिक रेजिलेंस को हम कैसे एनहांस कर सक, कर सकते हैं तो इसके लिए हमने कुछ सॉरी टू इंटरप्ट यू बट प्लीज कम टू दंक्लूजन इसके अंदर एक इसके अंदर हम बताएंगे कि हम कैसे किस तरह उनको उनको एनाउंस कर सकते हैं उनको बिल्डिंग को कैसे कर सकते हैं उसके लिए हमने बताया कि एक स्कूल को एक सुपोर्टिव इन्वायरमेंट देना होगा भाई सुपोर्टिव इन्वायरमेंट देंगे उनको तो उनकी जो प्रतिभा है पोटेंशियल वो निकल पाएगा और डेवलप रियलिस्टिक एक्सपेक्टेशन जब हम उसको हाइपोथेटिकल नहीं कि भी हमें हम हम जनरली क्या करते हैं क्या करते हैं कि उस लड़के के आपके क्लास में देखते हम लोग कि उसके वो टॉप कर गया हम जनरली देखते ना बिकॉज उसका लड़का टॉप कर गया अपने वाला क्यों नहीं किया लेकिन हमें करना किससे चाहिए उस लड़के की पिछली क्लास से करना चाहिए अपने को कंपैरिजन उसका तभी पता चलेगा ना कि पिछले ग्रेड कितने लिए थी इसको और अब कितने ग्रेड लिए हैं ये बेसिकली है इसको जो रियलिस्टिक अप्रोच अपनाएंगे तभी ये बेनिफिट रहेगा कल्टिवेट एक ग्रोथ माइंड एक माइंड अपने को एक करना पड़ेगा इसकी कैसे उसको हम पॉजिटिव लेकर चले और एनहांस प्रॉब्लम सॉल्विंग एंड डिसीजन मेकिंग स्किल जो कि एनईपी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी है बेसिकली इसके ऊपर क्या करती है एम्पिस करती है ये मेरे टॉपिक था ये मेरी स्टेटमेंट धन्यवाद थैंक यू सो मच सर थैंक यू वेरी मच नाउ आई वुड लाइक टू इनवाइट आवर नेक्स्ट पार्टिसिपेंट मिसेस रेखा रानी नीलम यूनिवर्सिटी मिसेस रेखा रानी फ्रॉम नीलम यूनिवर्सिटी आर यू देयर मैम Ma'am will present on abstract algebra in daily context of mathematical education, and after that, Dr. Suman Devi, ma'am, please be ready with your PPT. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Rekha from Nilam University Department of Mathematics. My topic is abstract algebra in daily context: a mathematical education perspective. Okay. Next slide, sir. Abstract algebra, a branch of mathematics that explores algebraic structure at a highly abstract level, may seem like an acquired discipline with little relevance to the practicalities of daily existence. However, this paper aims to unveil the hidden applications of abstract algebra in various facets of journal life, shedding light on its unexpected and far-reaching influence. The foundation of abstract algebra lies in the study of algebraic structure, such as groups, rings, and fields, which serve as generalized model for diverse mathematical system. Next, one of the most evident application of abstract algebra is in the realm of digital security and cryptography. Group theory, a fundamental concept. in abstract algebra form the backbone of encryption algorithm ensuring the confidentiality and integrity of sensitive information in the digital communication the robustness of these algorithms relies on the mathematical principle of abstract algebra safeguarding our transactions communications and personal data in the digital age so next slide introduction in the vast landscape of mathematical disciplines abstract algebra emerges as an intricate and esoteric branch delving into algebraic structure at a level of abstraction that might initially appears disconnected from the party practicalities of everyday life often relegated to the realm of theoretical mathematics abstract algebra seems distinct its relevance obscured by its apparent acquired nature however this paper embarked on a journey to dispel this common misconception seeking to eliminate the clandestine applications of abstract algebra that weave through the tapestry of our general existence so next slide 
objective. The objective of research of this research paper is to explore and highlight the practical applications of abstract algebra in various real world scenarios. The paper aims to bridge the gap between the seemingly complex and theoretically nature of abstract algebra and its tangible impact on everyday life. By providing specific example and connection, the research paper seeks to demonstrate how abstract algebra concepts are utilized in diverse fields such as cryptography, error detection and correction, computer graphics, searching algorithms, GPS navigation, coding and art and design. Sorry to interrupt you, ma'am, but please conclude your presentation. Please. Second last. Next. In, in conclusion, even though abstract algebra sounds complicated, it's actually a crucial part of our everyday life. It helps keep our online transactions secure, ensure our messages are sent accurately, create the cool graphics in video games, and even determines how Google ranks such results. It plays a role. Uh, it plays a role in GPS navigation, computer programming, and even the beautiful patterns in art and article architecture. So while we might not think about it every day, abstract algebra is like the secret power behind many of the things we use and enjoy without realizing it. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Now I would like to invite our next presenter of the day, Dr. Suman Devi, ma'am, from Nilam University. Dr. Suman Devi, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. And after that, Mr. Adarsh, sir, please be ready with your PPT. Yes, ma'am, please start. Namaskar, I'm Dr. Suman Devi, Sahayak Pradyapak, Nilam Vishwidalaya Cafe. I want to show you the show paper in the show paper. मेरा विषय है पत्रकारिता एक अध्ययन मुद्दे एवं चुनौतियां मीडिया का जो स्वरूप पहले दिखाई पड़ता था आज वह बदल चुका है प्राचीन समय में मीडिया का अर्थ था सिर्फ सूचना से लिया जाता था परंतु आज शिक्षा मनोरंजन व्यापार ज्ञान विज्ञान चिकित्सा आदि सभी क्षेत्रों में मीडिया अहम भूमिका निभाता है सर अब पत्रकारिता मीडिया के प्रमुख प्रकार प्रिंट मीडिया का ही विकसित स्वरूप है प्रिंट प्रिंट मीडिया को साधारण शब्दों में छिपी हुई सूचना का माध्यम कह सकते हैं पंडित जुगल किशोर के नेतृत्व में प्रकाशित तो होने वाले उद्दन मार्तंड नामक पत्र से हिंदी पत्रकारिता की विकास यात्रा आरंभ हुई जो आज निरंतर विकसित व विस्तृत हो रही है पत्रकारिता ज्ञान व विचारों का शब्द ध्वनि व चित्रों के माध्यम से जन जन तक पहुंचाने की एक कला है पत्रकारिता समाज के यथार्थ को प्रस्तुत करता है इसे कला व विज्ञान दोनों का सामंजस्य कहा जा सकता है पत्रकारिता की आत्मा सूचना अथवा संवाद को माना जाता है पत्रकारिता शब्द अंग्रेजी के जर्नलिज्म शब्द का हिंदी अनुवाद है जो जर्नल शब्द से उद्भूत हुआ है जिसका अर्थ है दैनिक अर्थात दैनिक कार्यकलापों का विवरण जर्नल में रहता है समाचार पत्र एवं पत्रिकाओं को दैनिक साप्ताहिक पाक्षिक मासिक त्रैमासिक अर्धवार्षिक वार्षिक आदि श्रेणियों में उद्भूत किया गया है सर लास्ट वाले निसंदेह भारतीय लोकतंत्र को सफल बनाने में पत्रकारिता का विशेष योगदान रहा है सत्ता व जनता के मध्य कड़ी का कार्य करते हुए भारतीय पत्रकारिता ने नए आयाम स्थापित किए पत्रकारिता में निम्न स्तंभ शामिल हैं साहित्य धर्म संस्कृति समाज महिला जगत उद्योग कानून चिकित्सा व्यापार कृषि खेल मनोरंजन व्यायाम स्वास्थ्य विज्ञान शिक्षा इत्यादि Daniel. Thank you so much, ma'am. Now I would like to invite Mr. Adarsh from Nilam University, Kathal. Mr. Adarsh, sir, from Nilam University. Are you there, sir? Um, 
Mr. Adarsh from Nilam University, there, sir. Okay, I would move to our next presenter then. Miss Reena Devi from Nilam University. Miss Reena Devi from Nilam University. Are you there, ma'am? Miss Reena Devi from Nilam University. Are you there, ma'am? Reena, ma'am? Are you there in online or offline mode? Reena, ma'am? Okay. I would move to our next presenter, Mrs. Sonia from Nilam University. Mrs. Sonia from Nilam University. Sonia, ma'am, are you there? Okay, I would move to our next presenter then. Mrs. Samreet Kaur. Mrs. Samreet Kaur from Nilam University. Uh, excuse me, ma'am. Yes, sir, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, well, this technology. Sorry, you are not audible to me. Sorry, ma'am, you are not audible. Yes, sir, ma'am. You are in which technical session? Uh, hello, is this audible? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, you are in which technical session? Yeah, yeah actually, how much time will you take like uh, for mine? Uh, three, three. So please go to your respective Zoom room. This is technical session. One going here. There will but be a breakout I'm room option. The technical section. It, this time coming. Uh, okay. Breakout room option. option like there, there on your screen. Please listen to me. There is a breakout room option on your screen. Please click on that okay. and move to your technical session three. Sure. Okay. Okay. Okay, fine. Thank you so much, ma'am. Mrs. Sonia, ma'am, are you there? Mrs. Sarmeet Kaur, ma'am, are you there? Okay, then I would like to invite my next participant, Dr. Pavitra Devi, ma'am, from Nilam University. Yes, ma'am, you can start. Sir. After that, please, Poonam Sharma, ma'am, be ready with your presentation. I am Dr. Pavitra, Nailam University School of Yoga. I am a teacher 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 of yoga. और पेपर स्टार्ट करने से पहले मैं एक महत्वपूर्ण जानकारी देना चाहूंगी श्रीमद् भगवत गीता में वह ज्ञान है थोड़ा सा अपने जिस ग्रंथ से मैंने योग को लिया है उसके बारे में एक्सप्लेन करना थोड़ा सा मैं महत्वपूर्ण समझती हूँ क्योंकि भगवत गीता दो है एक पुराण है और एक भगवत गीता है जिसमें भगवान श्री कृष्ण ने यानी कि योगेश्वर श्री कृष्ण ने अर्जुन को यह ज्ञान सुनाया जो 18 अध्याय 700 श्लोक 45 मिनट महाभारत के समय सुनाया गया था जो योग भूमि जो सॉरी युद्ध क्षेत्र कुरुक्षेत्र में सुनाया गया था और इसी के आधार पे मैं अपना रिसर्च पेपर प्रेजेंट करती हूँ इस ये है जो श्रीमद् भगवत गीता है 900 भाषाओं में ट्रांसलेट है और सबसे अधिक पढ़ा जाने वाला ग्रंथ है परिचय फर्स्ट फर्स्ट स्लाइड से हो गया परिचय भौतिक जगत में आधुनिक आज के समय में सुबह अशुभ विचार अंतकरण में व्याप्त होते हैं जिस कारण मनुष्य के शारीरिक और मानसिक स्वास्थ्य प्रभावित होता जा रहा है शुभांताओं की कामना मनुष्य के जीवन में बनी रहती है सभी चाहते हैं कि हम ये कार्य कर रहे हैं तो हमारा भलाई ही हो अदरवाइज दूसरी जो एस्पेक्ट दूसरा जो एस्पेक्ट है उसको देखना नहीं चाहेंगे कि कितनी बार उसका नेगेटिव रिजल्ट भी आता है 
ओके यथार्थ गीता के अनुसार ये कामनाएं जो हमारे मन शरीर और आत्मा और हमारे आसपास के वातावरण को प्रभावित करते हैं कहा रहती हैं श्री कृष्ण ने बताया है अर्जुन को उस संवाद में कि इंद्रिय मन और बुद्धि के निवास स्थान कहे गए हैं मानसिक अवसाद का कारण तन से अविद्या मोह माया इंद्रिय और मन के मन और बुद्धि के समूचे यानी के समूह शारीरिक मानसिक असंतुलन पैदा कर देते हैं फलत शारीरिक और मानसिक आज एक गंभीर समस्या के रूप में विकराल रूप धारण किए हैं नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट हमारे शोध का जो उद्देश्य है वह व्यक्ति के शारीरिक मानसिक स्वास्थ्य को विकसित मजबूत और संतुलित बनाए रखने के लिए सिर्फ भगवत गीता की जो भूमिकाएं है मनुष्य के जीवन में उसका अध्ययन करना है और श्रीमद भगवत गीता के द्वारा मनुष्य के उत्कर्ष मनुष्य को उत्कर्ष के मार्ग पर अग्रसर करना है नेक्स्ट सॉरी टू इंटरप्ट यू मैम प्लीज कंक्लूड ओके मिनट मैम गीता एवं सारायिक तथा मानसिक स्वास्थ्य आज की काल गति और जीवन शैली के कारण मानव शारीरिक व मानसिक रूप से विकार युक्त होता जा रहा है और अपनी परिस्थिति और अधिक कार्यो के कारण शारीरिक व मानसिक समस्याओं तथा हताशा और निराशा में डूबता जा रहा है जिसका प्रभाव मानव के अंग और प्रत्यंग पर पड़ता है जैसे कि शरीर से मन मन से चरित्र प्रभावित हुए बिना नहीं रह सकते नेक्स्ट सर योग युक्त होने पर ही विषम घटनाओं से विचलित नहीं होता है जब मनुष्य समबुद्धि योग से युक्त होता है समबुद्धि योग युक्त होने का मतलब यहाँ मैं बहुत छोटे से शब्दों में समझाना चाहूंगी कि हर स्थिति में शारीरिक मानसिक और सभी जो हमारी स्थितियां हैं जैसे कि मनुष्य का जो अंतकरण है जैस अंतकरण में चार चीजें आती हैं मन बुद्धि चेता और अहंकार इनको बैलेंस समाधान एवं उत्कर्ष से भरे पड़े हैं इससे तपस्त होता है की श्रीमद भगवीता भगवत गीता रोग ग्रस्त शारीरिक सोच संता ग्रस्त मन हैरान परेशान भावनाएं दुविधा ग्रस्त तथा खंडित संकल्प की समस्याओं के मूल में जाकर उनके समुचित समाधान के सूत्र प्रस्तुत करती है जिसके पालन करने से सिर्फ मनोदैहिक समस्याओं का समाधान संभव है अभी तो समग्र स्वास्थ्य के प्रति स्वास्थ्य की प्राप्ति के साथ शारीरिक व मानसिक बौद्धिक आध्यात्मिक सामाजिक उत्कर्ष का मार्ग प्रशस्त करती है थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू मैम Now I would like to invite my next participant of the day, Poonam Sharma, ma'am, from Nilam University. Poonam Sharma, ma'am, are you there, ma'am? Hello. Blabo, sir. Please mute your mic. Hello, I'm Sule Muhammad. Hello. Yes, Sule Muhammad, sir. Yes, sir. yes, ma'am. Sir, uh, in which afternoon, technical ma session is your presentation? Yes, it is a technical problem, but now I am back. Sir, in which uh, technical afternoon. session you are being scheduled? A uh, three technical session. So three. please click on the breakout room on your screen and click on the technical session three. This is technical session one. Mm -hmm. There must be an option of breakout room on your screen, or in mm -hmm. more options. Please click yes, on it sure. and select your technical session three. Okay. 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 Thank you. Now I would like to invite Poonam Sharma, ma'am, from Nilam University. Poonam Sharma, ma'am, from Nilam University, are you there, ma'am? 
Okay, next I would like to invite Dr. Narendra Kumar, sir, from Nelam University. Dr. Narendra Kumar, sir, from Nelam University. Dr. Narendra Kumar, are you there? Okay, I will move to our next presenter. Yada yada hi dharmasya glanir bhauti bharata abhyutthanam adharmasya tadatmanam srijanam Nilam Visavidalya mein upasthit sabhi vidvajan aur sodha chatar jo upasthit huye hain sabhi ka aadar karte hain aur jo vidwano ko namaskar karte hain to aaj मैं आपके सामने डॉक्टर नरेंद्र कुमार डिपार्टमेंट संस्कृत पाली प्राकृत विभाग नीलम विश्वविद्यालय मेरा विषय है आधुनिक युग में श्रीमद् भगवत गीता का महत्व क्या है श्रीमद् भगवत गीता आधुनिक युग में वेद ब्राह्मण आरण्यक उपनिषद आदि सभी ग्रंथ ग्रंथों का आदर है लेकिन इस भगवत गीता ग्रंथ का आज के दौर में विशेष महत्व है और जो कि हमारे जीवन में बहुत ही एक काम की चीज है क्योंकि देखो यह जो भारत देश में जो प्रकट हुई एक विश्व की हमारी यह धरोहर है जो कि हमारे जीवन में बहुत महत्वपूर्ण स्थान रखती है किस प्रकार रखती है आज के दौर में जो हमारे पास गाड़ी है बंगला है कार है इत्यादि देखो जिस प्रकार से उनका महत्व है यदि उनका महत्व किस लिए है कि वो बगैर पेट्रोल तेल के नहीं चलती उसी प्रकार से जो मानव का जीवन है वह भी बिना ज्ञान बिना संस्कार के आगे नहीं चल सकता तो जिस प्रकार से एक गाड़ी को पेट्रोल की आवश्यकता होती है उसी प्रकार से मानव को भी संस्कारों की आवश्यकता होती है जीवन में आगे बढ़ने के लिए तो हमारे जीवन का उद्देश्य क्या है यह श्रीमद् भगवत गीता में भी श्री कृष्ण ने बताया है अर्जुन को उससे पहले देखो जो हमारा उद्देश्य है जीवन का देखो सभी चीजों की आवश्यकता है बंगला हो गाड़ी हो या मान लीजिए जो भी संसार में वस्तुएं बनी है उन सब का कोई न कोई उपयोगिता है कोई न कोई उनका उद्देश्य जरूर है बिना उद्देश्य के कोई भी वस्तु या इस संसार में किसी भी वस्तु का निर्माण नहीं हुआ है तो सबका अपना अपना उद्देश्य है देखिए जो हमारा जो श्रीमद् भगवत गीता में कहा भी गया है इसमें श्री कृष्ण ने जब कुरुक्षेत्र की युद्ध भूमि में उन्होंने कहा भी था कि देखो आज का जो उस टाइम में जो तनावपूर्ण जो अर्जुन था युद्ध लड़ने के लिए तैयार नहीं था तो इतना तनाव था कि वो आगे नहीं जा रहा मतलब युद्ध भूमि में क्योंकि उसके सामने क्या था कि उसके सामने उसके परिजन थे उसके परिवार वाले थे तो इस कारण से वह आगे नहीं बढ़ा था श्री कृष्ण ने उसके तनाव को दूर करने के लिए मतलब उसको आगे बढ़ने के लिए श्रीमद भगवत गीता का उपदेश गीता का उपदेश उस श्री अर्जुन को दिया तो इसमें और वह उपदेश पाकर अर्जुन को मन की शांति प्राप्त हुई और मन की शांति प्राप्त होने के बाद वह अपने धर्म पर चलता हुआ उन अपने परिजनों को सॉरी टू इंटरप्ट यू सर सॉरी टू इंटरप्ट यू सर सॉरी टू इंटरप्ट यू बट प्लीज कंक्लूड जी और युद्ध में उसको सभी परिजनों को जो उसके अपोजिट थे उनको परास्त किया और परास्त करने के बाद उन्होंने वह युद्ध में विजय भी प्राप्त की देखिए हमारा जो एक पुरातन जीवन है और आधुनिक जीवन है मैंने आधुनिक जीवन के बारे में बात की है तो आधुनिक जीवन से पहले पुरातन जीवन को देखना बहुत ही जरूरी है पुरातन जीवन में मतलब पुराने समय में क्या था कि सभी लोग मेहनती थे 
मेहनती थे सब अपना कार्य करते थे परिवार साथ में रहता था सभी अपने काम को मिलजुल कर बांट कर करते थे और जो एक मैं कहूं तो जो परिवार था वो सामूहिक था और वो अपना अपना दायित्व सभी निर्वहन करते थे लेकिन जब आज आधुनिक समय की बात करते हैं तो आधुनिक समय में क्या है आधुनिक समय में मशीनीकरण का युग है सभी शहरों की तरफ दौड़ते हैं और सामूहिक की बजाय एकल परिवार को ज्यादा महत्व देते हैं तो एकल परिवार को महत्व देते हैं उसके लिए श्रीमद भगवत गीता का ज्ञान बहुत ही जरूरी है क्योंकि सामूहिक परिवार था संस्कार थे एकल परिवार में देखो मैं ये नहीं कहूंगा संस्कार नहीं है संस्कार जरूर है लेकिन आवश्यकता है उस जीवन पर चलते हुए कि इस श्रीमद भगवत गीता का ज्ञान उनके लिए बहुत ही आवश्यक है बहुत ही जरूरी है पुराने समय की बात कहें तो सारा का सारा जो जीवन था वो कठिनाई से भरा हुआ था किस प्रकार से कठिनाई से भरा हुआ था सभी मनुष्य देखो खेती करते थे हल जोतना पशुओं को चारा डालना दूर दूर तक गाड़ी इत्यादि कुछ नहीं थी तो पैदल ही जाते थे तो इस प्रकार से और महिलाएं पुराने समय में महिलाएं क्या करती थी चूल्हा चूल्हा जलाती थी रसोई का कार्य करती थी कपड़े धोती थी हाथ से कपड़े धोना हाथ से कपड़े धोती थी और उसके बाद क्या था कि देखो चक्की चलाना गेहूं पीसना इत्यादि बच्चों का लालन पालन करना और बड़े बुढ़ो की सेवा करना यह पुराने समय में एक नारी अपने महत्व को समझती थी सर प्लीज कंपाइल सर प्लीज कंक्लूड जी और आधुनिक समय में देखो ये बहुत ही एक इन सभी चीजों से दूर हट चुका है मानो और वो सभी टेक्निकल जैसे मान लीजिए कंक्लूजन ठीक है धन्यवाद थैंक यू सर नाउ आई वुड लाइक टू इनवाइट शिखा मैम शिखा वशिष्ठ मैम आर यू देव मैम शिखा वशिष्ठ मैम नेक्स्ट ऑन द लिस्ट इज मिस सुषमा रानी मैम मिस सुषमा रानी मैम आर यू देव मैम शिखा मैम सुषमा मैम एनी वन फ्रॉम यू ओके पूनम शर्मा मैम फ्रॉम नीलम यूनिवर्सिटी पूनम शर्मा मैम आर यू देव मैम पूनम मैम आर यू देव डॉक्टर आरती फ्रॉम नीलम यूनिवर्सिटी डॉक्टर आरती फ्रॉम नीलम यूनिवर्सिटी आर यू देव मैम में में उपस्थित मान विद्वान और सम्मानीय श्रोतागण नमस्कार मेरा नाम पूनम है मैं पीएचडी हिंदी की शोध छात्रा हूँ आज हमारा विशेष ध्यान एक ऐसे विषय पर है जो भारत की समृद्धि और सामाजिक समरसता की दिशा में महत्वपूर्ण योगदान करने की अक्षमता है आत्मनिर्भर और भारत तकनीकी उन्नति और समृद्धि की दिशा में एक अध्ययन है भारत ने स्वतंत्रता के बाद से अनेक बड़े प्रयत्नों का सामना किया और आत्मनिर्भर भारत की दिशा में कदम से कदम मिलाकर बढ़ा आत्मनिर्भर भारत का अर्थ है एक ऐसा राष्ट्र है जो अपनी आवश्यकताओं को स्वयं ही पूर्ण कर सकता है और आधारित स्रोतों पर नहीं निर्भर निर्भर है इस सिद्धांत का मुख्य उद्देश्य है कि देश को एक सकारात्मक और समर्थशील मार्ग पर लाना है ताकि वह स्वयं तकनीकी और आर्थिक दृष्टि से समृद्धि की ओर बढ़ सके आधुनिक युग में तकनीकी उन्नति से हमारा समाज एक दृष्टिकोण देने दृष्टिकोण को नए दृष्टिकोण देने का कारण बनाया इस यात्रा में भारत ने आत्मनिर्भरता के माध्यम से तकनीकी उन्नति की दिशा में कदम से कदम मिलाकर भूमिका निभाई इस अध्ययन से हम एक विभिन्न क्षेत्रों में भारत के आत्मनिर्भरता के प्रयासों का विश्लेषण करेंगे जो समृद्धि और स्व विकास और सामाजिक समर्थता को बढ़ावा देने में सहायक है आत्मनिर्भरता भारत एक अभियान भारत सरकार की एक महत्वपूर्ण पहल है जिसका उद्देश्य है कि देश को आत्मनिर्भर 
बनाना आत्मनिर्भर आत्मनिर्भर भारत अभियान का इतिहास आत्मनिर्भर भारत अभियान की शुरुआत कोरोना पैंडमिक के समय हुई जब देश को अचानक आर्थिक और सामाजिक चुनौतियों का सामना करना पड़ा इस अभियान का संकेत भारतीय स्वतंत्रता संग्राम से लिया गया है जहाँ स्वतंत्रता के बाद देश ने अपनी स्वतंत्रता की दिशा में कई कदम उठाए थे यह अभियान 2020 में प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी के नेतृत्व में शुरू हुआ था और इसका मुख्य लक्ष्य है कि भारत के विभिन्न क्षेत्रों में आत्मनिर्भर बनाना ताकि देश को आधारित स्रोतों पर कमी हो और विकास से भरपूर हो आत्मनिर्भरता अभियान के उद्देश्य आत्म निर्भर भारत की स्वतंत्रता सेनानियों को समर्थन और उन उन्हें आधुनिक तकनीकी साधनों के साथ संबोधित करने की दिशा में योजना ग्रामीण क्षेत्र में डिजिटल सुधार ग्रामीण भारत के विकास के लिए तकनीकी उपयोग की योजना और ग्रामीण समुदायों में डिजिटल सुधार के प्रयास विज्ञान और तकनीकी शिक्षा का प्रसार भारतीय शिक्षा प्रणाली तकनीकी शिक्षा का एक महत्वपूर्ण बनाने की योजना और विज्ञान के अध्ययन को बढ़ाव देने की दिशा में उपस्थित है ऊर्जा स्वायत नई ऊर्जा स्रोत के प्रयोग से भारत को ऊर्जा स्वायत की दिशा में अग्रणीय बनाने की योजना तकनीकी रूप ने नौसेना और सेना को सुदृढ़ करना तकनीकी उन्नति द्वारा नौसेना और सेना को आत्मनिर्भर बनाए रखने के लिए नए युद्ध साधनों का उपयोग कैरियर स्थिति और आत्म रोजगार युवा पीढ़ी की स्वतंत्रता से आत्म रोजगार के लिए प्रेरित करने और नए कैरियर अवसरों को बढ़ाना के लिए नए कार्यक्रम आर्थिक आत्मनिर्भरता भारत के अंतर्गत भारतीय अर्थव्यवस्था को प्रदान करना विभिन्न क्षेत्रों में निवेश बढ़ाना और नए उद्यमियों को और को प्रोत्साहित करना तकनीकी उन्नति तकनीकी और विज्ञान अक्षमता को बढ़ावा देना नई तकनीकी का उपयोग करना और रिसर्च करना इनोवेशन और प्रोत्साहित करना उद्यमिता और रोजगार छोटे और मध्यम उद्यमियों को प्रोत्साहित करना और विभिन्न क्षेत्रों को रोजगार की संभावनाओं को बढ़ाना विभिन्न समुदाय के विकास का समर्थन करना और सामाजिक को और सामाजिक को बढ़ावा देना उद्योग और उत्पादन उद्योग और उत्पादन क्षेत्रों में आत्मनिर्भरता का बढ़ावा देना और विशेष रूप से विदेश वस्त्रों और उपयोगों के आत्मनिर्भरता को कम करना कृषि और खाद की सुरक्षा उद्योग और उत्पादन क्षेत्रों में आत्मनिर्भरता का बढ़ाव देना और विशेष रूप से विदेशी वस्त्रों उद्योगों के प्रति निर्भरता कम करना कृषि और खाद सुरक्षा कृषि क्षेत्र में नए तकनीकी का उपयोग करना किसानों का समर्थन करना खाद सुरक्षा की स्थिति में सुधार करना सामाजिक एवं सांस्कृतिक समृद्धि यह अभियान सामाजिक और सांस्कृतिक समृद्धि के लिए महत्वपूर्ण है क्योंकि इसके माध्यम से समाज अपने स्वदेशों उत्पादों की प्रति आत्मग्रह को भावना बढ़ती है थैंक यू मैम नाउ आई वुड लाइक टू इन्वाइट डॉक्टर अनुज नारवाल फ्रॉम नीलम यूनिवर्सिटी Dr. Anuj Narwal from Nilam University, are you there, sir? Next, I would like to invite Miss Anju Bala from Nilam University. If anyone out of them is present, please start your presentation. Dr. Anuj Narwal or Miss Anju Bala. Shikha ma'am Sushma ma'am anyone who wants to present okay mr fanuel rudi from nilam university he will be presenting on a new approach charting india's path to global habitation and prominence mr fanuel sir <laughs> mr fanuel rudi sir would you like to present thank yes. you thank you sir please sir distinguished guests fellow enthusiasts of intellectual pursuits ladies and gentlemen today we embark on an exploration of a compelling narrative 
one that what one that revolves around the rise of India as a formidable player in the arbitration in the arena of international arbitration. Arbitration is a favorite private dispute resolution mechanism, and particularly international arbitration, it allows for a meeting of different legal cultures. As we delve into the intricacies of arbitration, we are confronted with choices. One, the choice of an arbitration seat. Parties need to choose where they need, they want to conduct their arbitration dispute. Thus, this aspect of arbitration really has an impact on the legal landscape uh, the, and the sanctity of the awards that are that might be passed after the resolution of the dispute. Think London, Singapore, and Hong Kong, the big wigs of international arbitration. But what about the giant that's awakening in this narrative? I am talking about India. Today we are compelled to ask, can India emerge as the next beacon of efficient and reliable cross-border dispute resolution? Let us give, let us ignite a collective imagination. Imagine a, na a nation rich in economic prowess, armed with a robust legal uh, framework and supported by a pool of talented professionals. Imagine India not just participating, but shining as a global hub for efficient and reliable dispute resolution. This research paper basically confronts the challenges, uh, navigates the strengths and envisions the promising trajectory that India is poised to undertake. Before we delve into the before we delve into India's current standing, let us rewind the tape and go back to ancient India, where the story of arbitration is found in different narratives, uh, such as ancient scripts uh, like the the Manusmriti and the Dharma Shastra, which are ba which basically form the foundation of arbitration, albeit through mediation back in the day. Arbitration has undergone very, uh, various reforms. Particularly, we look at uh, the British colonial rule, which basically brought in structure to the legal framework of India with its common laws. Fast forward to the 1900s, a period of economic liberalization and legal modernization, India recognized the need for a robust arbitration framework that aligned with global standards. The Arbitration Act of 1996 was the answer. Now, this, this research further goes into a comparative analysis between uh, India and the various prominent arbitration hubs such as Singapore, Hong Kong, and the UK. In this analysis, we look at the traits that make up a prominent arbitration hub, which are... Sorry to interrupt you, sir. Sorry to interrupt you, sir. Sir, please conclude. Yes, ma'am. Enforceability of awards for arbitration regime, grounds for annulment, professional competence, as well as convenience and cost. Ladies and gentlemen, as we draw the curtains on this exploration, remember that what we've witnessed is not just a narrative. It's a testament to India's commitment to shaping the future of international dispute resolution with a proactive approach, commitment to global best practices, and a sprinkle of innovation. India is poised to shine as a beacon of efficiency and reliability. In the words of Lord Godsmith Casey, it is clear that India has a solid foundation from which to pursue its goal of becoming a leading arbitration hub. Thank you all for your time and engagement in this exploration of India's arbitration potential. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. So today we had a series of diverse and very insightful presentations in this technical session one. Now, I would like to invite our chairperson, sir, Professor Lakshmi Narayan Das, sir, to conclude and give his expert remarks about today's technical session. Uh, Welcome, thank, sir. Yeah, thank you, Dilpreet, ma'am. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, 
very good afternoon to all the presenters and uh, the uh, chairman sir and the general secretary of the ICERT and all the patron and uh, NIILM University. Uh, first of all, I congratulate both ICERT as well as the NIILM University to conduct such a, a glorious one day multidisciplinary uh, conference on uh, various uh, topics. <clears throat> Uh, and very carefully, I listened all the presenters. And this is, again, a very diversified group of topics. What, again, all are, have been presented. A very few uh, viewpoints just I am giving. Uh, maximum papers what I have listened are very conceptual papers. Few presenters are only given uh, some research-based paper where, where, again, they have collected some data. Then they did some statistical analysis. Then they fit any of their paper to some mathematical calculation. There is some findings, outcomes. This is our, again, uh, uh, you can call the not a goodness. I can say that I am not, again, listening to them. And also, they have given the conclusion. Few are, again, uh, presented in Srimad Bhagavad Gita, which is now a very upcoming topic in India. And many universities are, again, adopting this particular uh, topic also because Srimad Bhagavad Gita is again giving many principles of the management science. So whatever the top Indian heritage or the what again the Indian culture, what again we have already left behind now, many universities and government of India is trying to bring those particular, you can call the concept, moral concept to the new breed of the people. That's a very good step. And uh, a few uh, presenters have given their uh, presentation in Hindi in the area of journalism, healthcare, then again, I can say adult education, then advertisement. So overall, uh, overall I, I understand it is, <laughs> it, it is uh, fulfilling the title of today's international conference, what again, NIIL University and ICERT has been conducted. Thank you very much for inviting me. I am a heartful thanks to ICERT as well as NIIL University for this opportunity and again, just the presenter's paper. Thank you very much. All the best to the presenters. And again, I wish ICERT and LIILM University must again go for such, such kind of the big, big mileage for the research presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir, for your expert remarks and opinion about our presentations of today. Now, I hand over the podium to Dr. Ekta Chahal, ma'am, for the invitation of the lunch. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you so much, Dr. Gilbert Kaur. Now I request all the research scholars who are present here physically, uh, there will be a lunch break from 2 p.m. to 2.30, and we will rejoin for valedictory session sharp at 2.30. Please abide with the timings so that we can conclude and we can do our valedictory ceremony on time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take a break. Catch on, lady. Number. Interview 
बा बुन ही है जी कम करनी नहीं के जी बोल रहा ji <laughs> 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 Ichikawa iba kono. Ni ba wote kati ya. Kuchi kichia muri ngapa kwa
Ladies and gentlemen, as we draw the curtains. To elaborate the overall summary of the conference, ma'am, please put your hands together for Professor Dr. Arna Anchal. A very good afternoon to all of you. Namaskar. Distinguished guests, esteemed colleagues, and fellow participants. As we disperse across continents, let us carry the words of Albert Einstein that learn from yesterday, live for today, go for tomorrow. Our shared knowledge propels us toward a hopeful, future. The main theme of the conference today chosen is really multidisciplinary. Global dynamics in management, health, social sciences, science and engineering. It is truly honor to to stand before this gathering to brilliant mind around the globe. As we conclude this international conference, let us reflect on the wealth of knowledge shared in this conference. The collective pursuit of progress that unites us today. As we have received more than 300, I think more than 300 registrations around the globe, online and offline, mainly from USA, UK, Egypt, Nigeria, Malaysia, Poland, Pakistan, Ethiopia, Nepal, Oman, and many more countries, of course, are India too. Throughout these days, we have transcended borders and disciplines, fostering a diverse diversity of ideas that enriches our understanding of the world. The exchange of perspective, research findings, and innovative solutions has illuminated new pathways for collaboration and advancement. I accent heartful gratitude to the team of Neelam University and our team ICRT and all who contributed to the success of conference. As we disperse to our respective countries, corners, globe the world, let us carry with us the inspiration gained today here. May the connection made and insight shared fuel our endeavors to address the challenges that transcend borders. Together, we all are catalysts for the change, architects of progress and ambassadors of a shared commitment of excellence. Thus, I, Dr. Arunachal, Executive Director, Research and Publication, ICRT, 
congratulate with the words as we close the chapter remember as we are closing today's chapter but remember that your education is a dress rehearsal and for a life that is yours to live cherish the rehearsals and let us shine on the ground stage of the life wishing you all the best i uh, hope we'll learn many things we have learned many things today from this conference thank you thank you very much jai hind jai bharat thank you so much ma'am for your precious words and to address the conference a model of commitment to education recognized for outstanding contribution to the field of law yes i am talking about dr shri nivas rao kevati Pebble Hills University takes great pride in honoring Shri Nivas Rao Kevati with the degree of Doctor of Legal Studies. His significant contribution to the legal profession is extremely remarkable. Mr. Kevati holds professional licensures as an advocate in the Republic of India, North Republic in New York, USA. His extensive knowledge and expertise have made him a sought-after legal advisor for organizations in India. and even we are so much honored to announce him and to welcome him to address the conference mr shrinivas rao kevati so please good afternoon guys i am sure uh... after a long lunch and lunch and we all must be feeling sleepy <laughs> um i'll not take much of your time i must sincerely thank distinguished guests and uh, the scholars who are here i am really deeply touched i need to thank a few dignitaries here first of all i need to thank uh, the uh, vice chancellor of this university dr sir and of nilam university and i must also thank uh, mr sukumar who's sitting here who's recommended my name to them and um, i also have to thank uh, the icrt staff and uh, mr dr deepak and everybody um guys um, i'm not here to give you a big lecture but uh, i'm deeply touched this is the first time i came to haryana uh, i'm from new york um you know i've been a lawyer for 35 years and we started a firm in uh, delhi now with uh, my partner here mr uh, victor gaffney um the reason we came to delhi now we came to we want to touch some lives in north india as we always think myself and uh, mr vick uh, because the law you know is dharma and um, we want to uh, it's a service to and service to human beings is service to god so we don't have to go to temples and do fasting so with our legal knowledge we want to touch uh, base and help the north indians i mean i made a big name in south india and if you can google my name you'll see more than 1000 television interviews and a lot of articles and we do a lot of lectures in abroad in india but thing is we came here uh, because as a part of uh, the international council of education and research and training we want to touch and we want to help people you understand what i mean because it's part of uh, our efforts all the way we came from new york and my partner is from australia and we came all the way and i'm seeing azamud and saf came from dubai and uh, we must give him a big applause because we just came from uh, dubai only for this conference on environmental law um we both uh, also got uh, i think doctorates in uh, dubai and we are too we are getting it again and uh, it's a very honor um, and uh, thank you very much uh, sir for you know choosing us uh, to get that honorary doctorate i don't know what justification we can do but we will it's a burden on us because we have to give it back to the community and that too from north india now we have taken it some time in south and we have to give it to north indians and yes uh, as the uh, speaker said i was also awarded a doctorate by the pebbles university of america it's not the question of uh, getting all these doctorates but how much we can give it back to the community that's what it is we came all the way i came all the way from new york just to come and see you guys this is the first time i came to um, haryana and i was telling my guy yesterday we were driving 6 hours from uh, delhi i said to myself 
And I was telling Vic, I said, where these guys have constructed this Neelam University in the middle of jungle or something? <laughs> but when I come and when we see this, it's so pleasing. Beautiful garden, beautiful greenery. And the staff is so humble. So as the vice chancellor, so as the chairman. When I saw the chairman in the morning, he was in a regular clothes. And I was taken aback when they said he's the chairman of the group. Very humble. See, uh, most of the top people in the world have traveled about 40 countries. I see people who are top people are always humble. If you see, you know, Gandhi or if you see Mandela, any top person is very humble. I mean, I'm meeting all these professors. They have written books, 40 books, 50 books. They're so humble. I mean, this is a message for you guys in Haryana. Uh, you guys think that, oh, you're in a law school or you're doing a pharmacy degree but you have to be humble. The other thing which, are, which is disturbing me in northern part of India, I must be honest, um, Punjab used to be the richest state in the country. It was agricultural, a great in economy. And Haryana had a lot of history. You know, if you go back to Pandavas and all these things, and uh, one of the professors was saying that Pandavas was here, here. I mean, such a history Haryana has. And unfortunately now, because I get a lot of calls uh, from US and I get a lot of calls from this side of the world that people are becoming alcoholic and they're taking drugs, which is very, very sad. And uh, there's only one Kurukshetra University and 150 kilometers, there's only one Neelam University. I was just asking my partner actually, he's an Australian guy, I said, what is this Neelam means, uh, Victor? He said, Neelam means sapphire. Yes? Sapphire, sapphire yeah, sapphire. I mean, such a beautiful name they gave here. And it is a sapphire really in, in Haryana where there's 150 kilometers, there's no university. And how many people can get into a, a state-run university? I mean, and they're here in your doorsteps. You, you, and, and I looked at some of the facilities you have, pharmacy, engineering, law. And I, I visited the moot court as well. Beautiful location, beautiful facilities. I mean, when we were going to law school or college 30 years ago, we didn't have such facilities in India. That's the reason we left India, you know? I mean, you guys have great facilities. I think you should take uh, an advantage of this university. And uh, I wish uh, the uh, vice chancellor that, and I was uh, telling him, and because now you can see, you will see some uh, Australian guys and uh, some other guys coming and teaching here. And I'm taking on, on my, my partner's part, he will come and give a lecture one day here. And we want to touch uh, some universities and share our wisdom. One of the professors was saying there's a brain drain. I agree with him, there's a brain drain. Yes, we left this country. I had a gold medal, that's the reason I left this country. But now I'm coming back, professor, to come back and give something back to our country. We want to share. As uh, Mr. Victor was saying, it is not income to up upgrade you guys. What is the mean of education? to upgrade you guys, you know, up, 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 upscale you guys, not income, you know, upcome, right? So we are here and, um, you know, with the, uh, you know, with collaboration with International Council of Education and Research and Training, I mean, this is truly an international agency because they brought so many people onto the table. I mean, they pulled me from New York and they pulled uh, people from Dubai and, uh, and Egypt and uh, other parts of the world. I really uh, commend uh, the, the, the office bearers of, you know, International Council for Education and uh, Research and Training. And the other thing is, as the Vice Chancellor was saying that um, he wants to bring some good, um, you know, faculty for vocational programs. Today, you know, when you see, look back, in the earlier days, only academic programs were, were respected. Are you a doctor or a lawyer or a or, or professional? Now, uh, looking at uh, today's world, you know, we need good um, electricians. We need good plumbers. I mean, they're also making good money. I mean, in America, they make more money than lawyers, plumbers and electricians. I'm telling you the truth. I mean, I'm seeing the same thing in India today. So, I mean, there is tremendous potential uh, in this campus. And I was uh, recommending them that uh, they should enter into some articulation agreements with some foreign universities. And Nasimud even saying that he will help in uh, Middle East to get some students here. The, the other things is, uh, I've met the faculty here, they're all PhDs, I mean, and they've written so many books, I was just saying, 
that writing few articles is impossible. Go and check check up yourself. If you can write one article, I'll bet on it. It's not easy. We can talk in English. We can talk in Hindi, watch movies, chat with your friends on WhatsApp, but you can't write an article, I'm telling you. Go and write a book. I mean, these guys have written books. It's commendable. And uh, I salute all you guys, and I wish that I learned some of the techniques from you guys. And I would like to, um, you know, commend all of you guys. And it's a good number on a Sunday, you know. Um, you know, I, I, I see more women than boys. It's a sad. Because that's the way the boys are. They, I mean, I'm seeing that already. And, um, you know, we say gender equality and everything. Uh, you know, I think a woman has more opportunities now than men because they're in the front race. Uh, without uh, taking much of your time, I know it's lunchtime. People are uh, ready to get their doctorates and everything. And the last session should be there for another two more hours. And um, I think uh, I thank the photographers. I really thank the staff here. Those who have given us lunch and breakfast and, you know, they have honored us. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Vice Chancellor Sir, uh, under your leadership and the chairman leadership. Uh, if if this has started and if you'll have more and more of laurels in your head. And I congratulate once, once one and all, those who are graduating and those who are going to have exams. And I congratulate who are going to get uh, a honorary PhD. And Sukma, thank you very much for giving my name. And I didn't expect this, uh, Vice Chancellor Sap. I, I only came to see how, this is the first time I came to Haryana. And I'm deeply touched. It's beautiful and it's greenery. And uh, Mr. Wick would speak sometime to come and speak on permaculture and organic uh, farming because we all need sustainability and other things. That's what the whole world is now. Even Modi had a big uh, seminar for G20, I guess. That's one of the motto. Sustainability, education, health, all of that. I think we're all going to achieve that, hopefully. And uh, India is going to be a superpower. I'm telling you from an American standpoint, because whenever I come to India, I've been living in America for more than 22 years and I left uh, India 33 years ago. Whenever I come and see India, it's growing phenomenal. I mean, when I see the construction here, when I see people here, the facilities, the technology, you guys have to catch up, uh, I think, in law, in terms of law, and you guys have to catch up in terms of environment. Because there's a lot of pollution in Delhi, a lot of pollution when we're driving. I think you guys, I mean, these young children who are sitting here, you guys are the fathers of the nation tomorrow because today's child is tomorrow's father of the nation, as Gandhiji said. Because khande pe ho hai ye desh. I mean, I might not have an excellent Hindi, but we are old and we will go leave this country, leave this world. But the, the burden is on the young Turks, all your graduates sitting at the back, all the students. And uh, please be mindful of environment and uh, sustainability and health and you know rights and education. Education is only the key, I must tell you that. Take this very seriously and uh, and good luck and God bless you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Srinivas Rao Kevati for your humble words. Uh, I beg your pardon, sir. Neelam, in Hindi, it's Neelam. Uh, it's a kind of gemstone which is very expensive and rare. And But here, NIILM stands for Northern Institute of Integrated Learning and Management. I extremely pardon to correct you, but Neelam is also suitable to us. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Let's move ahead. Uh, now I would like to call for word of thanks for all the honorable guests here. Dr. Pavan Dasmana, Director, R&D Department, Neelam University, Kethil. Dr. Pavan Dasmanaji, please come out the us. With regards of all great personalities, good afternoon, Parnam. First of all, and this sequence, Dr. Srinivas Roy Kaveti, Kaveti International Law for New York, USA, London, and Wallis, UK, and India. Professor Dr. Samim Ahmed, Vice Chancellor, Neelam University, Kaithal, Haryana. 
डॉक्टर बलराज राणा मैनेजमेंट डायरेक्टर नीलम यूनिवर्सिटी प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर अरुणा आंचल एग्जीक्यूटिव डायरेक्टर रिसर्च एंड पब्लिकेशन डिविजनल आईसीआरटी डीन एंड हेड डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एजुकेशन बाबा मस्त नाथ यूनिवर्सिटी डोहता डॉक्टर नवनीत कौर एग्जीक्यूटिव डायरेक्टर एजुकेशन डिवीजन आईसीआरटी प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर राजेंद्र कुमार उपल प्रोफेसर एमेरिटस एम ग्लोबल चेयर प्रोफेसर बैंकिंग एंड फाइनेंस बी एफ सी एम टी भटिंडा पंजाब डॉक्टर एस के सिंगमर चेयरमैन आई सी आर टी प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर अमर सद्दी एच आर एंड स्ट्रेटेजी मैनेजमेंट प्रोफेसर आई पी ई मैनेजमेंट स्कूल पैरिस नू नजेरना विनीति ओमर दिन प्रोग्राम कोआर्डिनेटर सीनियर लेक्चरर नीलाई यूनिवर्सिटी नीलाई मलेशिया प्रोफेसर लक्ष्मी नारायण एच ओ डी एम बी ए जी ई सी कैंपस भुवनेश्वर डॉक्टर प्रियंका सिंगला एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इंग्लिश गवर्नमेंट कॉलेज ऑफ फॉर ओमेन हिसार हरियाणा डॉक्टर पुष्पांजलि सिंह एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ यूनिटीज एंड अप्लाइड साइंसेज स्कूल ऑफ मैनेजमेंट साइंसेज लखनऊ डॉक्टर जी राधिका प्रोफेसर बालवर कॉलेज ऑफ साइंस एंड मैनेजमेंट करूर तमिलनाडु डॉक्टर दिलप्रीत कौर असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर यूनिवर्सिटी बिजनेस स्कूल गुरु नानक देव यूनिवर्सिटी अमृतसर डॉक्टर सॉरी मिस्टर विक्टर गोपी फ्रॉम ऑस्ट्रेलिया वेलकम टू ऑल एंड on behalf of neelam university family i thank you from the bottom of my heart that you have taken out your precious time to give to the neelam university family and in the future i not only have hope but have full faith that you will continue your love and blessing like this again once again many many thanks to all of you thank you very much thank you so much dr pavan krishnan ji for your vote of thanks now the moment we all have been waiting for has arrived it gives me immense pleasure to announce the recipient of chanakya award this individual has exemplified in their relative streams and their dedication is truly inspiring Dr. Shri Nivas Rao Kevati, Kevati International Law Firm, New York, USA, London, and Wales, UK, and India. To honor all the Chanakya awardees, I request all the dignitaries present in the front row to please raise the occasion here. Dr. Shri Nivas Rao Kevati, Kevati International Law Firm, New York, USA, London, and Wales, UK, and India. Doctorate in Legal Studies, renowned, eminent, performer in his related field. Next, we have Dr. A. Pushpavli, Principal, Swaminathan Saraswati College of Education from for Women. Dr. Kiran Rakive, Principal, MVP, Samarts K K P G College, Igatpuri, Nasik. These guests guests are virtually connected with us. We have Dr. Sanjay Kumar Barik, Director, Priyanshu Research. 
Aju Consulting Experts Odisha, Dr. Sanjay Kumar Bari, to please, please welcome sir to receive the honor. Next, we have Dr. Nayak Singh, Associate Professor, Government PG College, Ambala, Kent, Haryana, for his renowned services in the relative field. Dr. Nayak Singh Ji. Next, we have Dr. Pawan Dasmana, Director, Research and Development, Neelam University, Kethal, Haryana. Dr. Pawan Daswana, sir, from the Research and Development Department. Yes. <laughs> Dr. Vikas Dip Singh Kohli, Associate Professor, Department of Law, Neelam University, Kethal, Haryana. I request to please receive the award. Dr. Rohit Ash, Assistant Professor. Dr. Preeti, Assistant Professor, Department of Botany, Neelam University, Kathal, Haryana, Coordinator for the same international conference. I think uh, it's a privilege to honor myself. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Hitta Chahar, yeah. Assistant Professor in English from the Department of English, Neelam University, Kathal Coordinator of the International Conference. <laughs> You did a great job. Did a great job. Next, we have Ms. Shivani Chahal, Assistant Professor in Computer Science and Application from the Department of Computer Science, Neelam University, Kathal, coordinator for our technical session. Yes. Ms. Megha Sharma, Assistant Professor from the School of Law, Neelam University, Kathal. She is also being presented as the coordinator. Dr. Rohitash Kumar, Assistant Professor, Department of Physics, Neelam University, Kethal, Haryana. He is also presented as the coordinator here. Okay. Okay. Now we have actually connected our guest. Dr. A. Pushpavli, Principal Swaminathan Saraswati College of Education for Women, Salem. Dr. Kiran Rakive, Principal MVP Samaj, KBG College, Igatpuri, Nasik, India. Dr. Hemkant Vijay Dhare, Assistant Professor, Department of English, Kalwan Education Society's Art, Commerce and Science College, Kalwan, Kalwan District, Nasik, Maharashtra. Professor Dr. Sharad Khandera Binor. Professor and Head Department of English, KRT Arts, BH Commerce and ABE Science, KTHM College, Nasik. Dr. Nagavali Arasabli, Assistant Professor, Department of Electronics, Kaneru, Lakshmiya University. Please put your hand, hands together for all the dignitaries who are connected with virtually. Dr. Taru Gupta, Associate Professor, Lucknow Public College of Professional Studies, Lucknow. Dr. Ankur Bala, Extension Lecturer, Department of Mathematics, Government College, Hansi Hisar. These are our virtually connected dignitaries. Please put your hands together for all those dignitaries. Now, the moment to award honorary doctorate. Firstly, I would like to call here M. Kavita. And Kavita, on on behalf of him, I would like to call Mr. Shirag. Mr. Shirag, 
to receive honorary doctorate. Next awarding, Chandra Mohan K. Chandra Mohan K. Please step forward to receive honorary doctorate. Our next awardee is Parth Sarthi Ayach. Please come forward to receive. Our next dignitary is Prabhaka Desh Pandey. Please welcome, sir, to receive your honorary doctorate. Prabhaka Desh Pandey. Clapping must go on. Clapping must go on. Next, we have Sayyad Anu Moinuddin to receive honorary doctorate. Sayyad Azam Mahinudi from South Africa. Again, glad to announce the name Mr. Srinivas Rao Kevati to receive the honorary doctorate. Thank you very much. I didn't expect this. That's a that's a you know surprise for me, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Next, we have Anku Mangla to receive the honorary doctorate. Anku Mangla. No. Okay. We have next Mr. Subhir SN to receive the honorary document. Please come forward, sir. I request all the dignitaries to please take their honorable chairs. Now it's time to hear from the honorary doctorates just we have announced. Firstly, I would like to call here Dr. Chandra Mohan K. I think it's privileged to announce Mr. Chandra Mohan K as now Dr. Chandra Mohan K for the event feedback. Dr. Chandra Mohan K, please come on the dice. Honorable Vice Chancellor and the other dignitaries of this Nilam University and all, all the persons who are assembled here to see this accreditation. So I am very much gratified and uh, glorified to be in this form to receive this, uh, this great award of doctrine. See, uh, this doctrine I received, you are considered to be a great uh, uh, man, man, man of my uh, experience or anything else, but it is an actualization, self actualization, the process of self actualization I have been um, aiming for a long time and I am very grateful to all uh, who have worked behind 
this uh, this achievement, especially the AMLA private uh, limited, especially uh, the my friend Mr. Jira and uh, Rahul who had worked for my success. So I extend my uh, great uh, gratitude and thanks to them. And I just welcome all of you. And thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir, for your valuable words. Now I would like to call Dr. Parth Sarthi Ayat. Respected licensor, sir, and other dignity members of Nilam University, a very good afternoon to all of you. Today, I'm feeling very honored, very privileged by receiving this honorary doctorate. And I would like to convey my gratitude to entire, <coughs> uh, entire Academic Council of uh, Nil University for being our this honorary doctorate. And I, I would also like to convey my gratitude to other Academic Council members for uh, their support and their help throughout this journey. Thank you. And I will put my effort to work more hard to put this unredacted dignity. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, and congratulations. Now I would like to call here Dr. Prabhakar Desh Pandey to say a few words. I'm grateful to Nilm University for conferring me upon me this uh, honorary doctorate in uh, software engineering and computer science. Usually it is thought that uh, in information technology is all about technology and uh, engineering and uh, science, but I must uh, uh, beg to differ a bit. Information technology is as much about business and unless you have a good business understanding and a good social understanding, you will not uh, excel in information technology. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Now we have Say Dr. Sayyid Azam Moinuddin. Dr. Sayyid Azam Moinuddin to say a few words. Thank you for giving. Thank you for giving, you know, PhD honor PhD for me. Thank you for Nilam University. Thank you for VC. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for your feedback. Now, I would like to call here Dr. Sudhir SN, Dr. Sudhir SN, to share his views. Thank you, Daniel. <clears throat> Organic theater is the growth of, of restoring the agriculture tradition, which has helped in man's existence and survives through the theater in organic art form. Agriculture is a combination of agrarian and art forms. Art can contribute a lot to the country, a development through creative interventions. Organic theater is a force development, the new thought, new media. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Congratulations and thank you so much, sir. Respected dignitaries, esteemed guests, speakers, delegates, and participants, as we draw the curtains on this incredible co conference, I stand here profoundly grateful for the privilege of expressing our collective gratitude. Firstly, a heartfelt thank you to all our esteemed speakers whose insights, expertise, and scholarly contributions have enriched our discussions and broadened our horizons throughout these engaging sessions. Your dedication and willingness to share your knowledge have been truly inspiring. I extend our sincere appreciation to all the participants and delegates who have traveled from different corners of the globe to grace this event. 
In fact, for those scholars also who have connected virtually with us, your active participation, thought provoking questions, and enthusiasm have been the driving force behind the success of this conference. We owe a debt of gratitude to the organizing committee whose meticulous planning, tireless efforts, and attention to detail have seamlessly brought this conference to fruition. Your dedication behind the scenes has not gone unnoticed and has contributed significantly to the smooth running of this event. A special thanks to our sponsor partners, ICRT team, whose support and contributions have been instrumental in making this conference possible. Your commitment to the advancement of knowledge and research is commendable and deeply appreciated. Our gratitude extends to the volunteers, technical staff, and everyone who worked diligently to ensure that every aspect of this conference ran smoothly. Last but not the least, I want to express our heartfelt thanks to each one of you, our audience, your active participation, insightful discussions, and unwavering enthusiasm have made this conference a resounding success. As we part ways, let's carry forth the knowledge, connections, and inspiration gained from this conference to further our respective fields. Once again, thank you all for your invaluable contributions and for making this conference a memorable and, and enriching experience. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much. All the dignitaries, all the research scholars from the team of Neelam University, from the team of ICRT. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you.